Good evening. Calling to order this meeting of the Arlington Select Board on Monday, June 5th. I am Select Board Chair Eric Helmuth. Tonight's meeting is being conducted in a hybrid format, consistent with Chapter 2 of the Acts of 2023, signed into law on March 29th, 2023, which further extends certain COVID-19 measures regarding remote participation in public meetings until March 31st, 2025. Before we begin, please note the following. First, this meeting is being collect conducted in the select board chambers and over Zoom. It is being recorded and simultaneously broadcast on ACMI. Second, persons wishing to join the meeting by Zoom may find information on how to do so on the town's website. Persons participating by Zoom are reminded that you may be visible to others and that if you wish to participate, we ask you to provide your full name in the interest of developing a record of the meeting. Third, all participants are advised that people may be listening who do not provide comment, and those persons are not required to identify themselves. Both Zoom participants and persons watching on ACMI can follow the posted agenda materials found on the town's website, specifically the Select Board Agendas and Minutes page. Let's see how much of the town's business we can get done tonight. Um, two preliminary items. Uh, first, uh, for anybody joining us by Zoom or in the room, I am going to take one item out of order, and that is the request for a package store license at 232 Mass Ave. Uh, the applicant has requested a continuance, so I will bring that to the board first, uh, the first thing that we do after this. Um, so if anybody's joined for that, just be aware that we're going to very likely ask the board to continue that to June 26th. Um, and secondly, for public comment tonight, uh, in general, you know, we, have, we have applicants for the Housing Authority, so they will each be given time to speak as part of that agenda item for the Housing Authority Board. But otherwise, the only public comment period tonight is the open forum, which follows um, the uh, item agenda 18. So uh, anything that you want to talk to the board about that we're going to talk about after that meeting or anything else you care to discuss, be sure to be ready to do that in open forum. If you're joining us by Zoom and you want to participate in open forum, all you need to do when we get to open forum, I will announce that, and you just need to raise your hand in Zoom. Don't do it now, uh, but be ready to do that. So if you don't know how to raise your hand in Zoom, Zoom, now is an excellent time to look that up. With that, and I will also note that Mr. DeCourcy will not be joining us this evening, either uh, in person or remotely, and with all members physically present, we will take uh, votes by voice and less legally required to take by uh, roll call. Did I forget anything, Mr. Vice Chair? You're good. He keeps me honest. All right. All good. All right, so let's take this item out of, uh, out of order. Let me find the exact name for it. Uh, this is item 18 for approval, all package store, city wine and spirits and smoke shop uh, that was proposed for 232 Mass Ave. The uh, applicant, through their attorney, has asked for a continuance due to illness uh, to June 26th. So I would uh, welcome discussion or a motion from the board. Motion to table till June 26th. Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? It is continued to June 26th, our next meeting. Thank you. All right. That takes us to back to the top of the agenda. And we have the FY 2023 third quarter financial report. And I believe we have Ms. Cody, our controller. Welcome, Ms. Cody. Thank you. Good evening. Ira Cody, town controller. Um, you received the quarterly revenue and expenditure report. Um, I see that you have a packed agenda, so uh, I will give you a summary of the summary. Um, again, um, it's... Uh, for the period ending March 31st, 2023, this is the third quarter, the burn rate should be at 75%. We're right on target, um, and we just have a few, very few exceptions. Several departments appear to be burning their budgets a little faster, and this is due to encumbrances or the timing of the charges. Some departments um, charge the indirects, let's say the enterprise, uh, we charge them at the beginning of the fiscal year, retirement and insurance as well. Um, we also have some departments that are below the 75% and this is mostly due to the staff vacancies. Um, we do not anticipate any reserve fund transfers this year except the facilities. 
facilities department um, has experienced, experienced an increase in the energy costs. So we think we might need roughly $40,000 by the end of the fiscal year. On the revenue side, there are a few items that I would like to highlight. One of them is the obvious, the interest income, which is 984%. But again, we have to look at the denominator. We had a very conservative estimate of $200,000, and this was a combination of um, large uh, volume of um, amounts of cash in the bank, also the interest rates that went really high, and some of them were almost 5%. Um, the building permits are 136% collection. This is mostly because the construction costs went, high, went up, and we charge 2% of the value of the total project. And also the wire, the, the electrical, sorry, is at 324%, but this is because of a particular building on Mass Ave, like uh, the MIRAC, I believe, at 1165, 1165 uh, Mass Ave. Um, the building permits were granted last year, but the wire permits, the electrical were collected uh, in October 22, which falls in fiscal year 23. Um, and finally, the hotel and motel tax, um, we, um, the revenue is at 199% and 106% respectively, and this is a combination of volume as well as the price increases. Enterprise funds are right where they're supposed to be, and um, we anticipate increases in retained earnings. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer. Thank you, Ms. Cody. Turn to the board. Uh, Ms. Mahan. Oh, thank you. Um, just three quick questions. One might be more of a comment and then something that's sort of off the beaten path. So um, am I correct on the, the school Medicaid collection? Um, is that something the town oversees and reimburses the schools or is that just something under the purview of the schools and they report back to us for this report? It's the school department only. So the nurses enter the data in the system and this consulting consultant PCG collects all the data, applies for reimbursement quarterly and the town receives the money. And then um, this I just sort of raised because this will be the third meeting that I've raised it at and it's just to raise a point. Um, on the earnings on investments. Just because when I f first became a member of the board, um, I spent lots and lots of time with people who are actuaries, people in comptroller, CPAs, to explain budgets, how you project um, in finances. So um, I guess I would just, when you're talking uh, with the town manager and whom whomever else, this is the third time, which is a good thing, but um, earnings on investment um, at the 984%, I think it's been trending that way. This is now the, the third time that it's come in that way. So I have a standing question. Um, are we being too conservative with our $200,000 estimate? And I only say that for um, the tight bu budget decisions we need to make, like the 83 to 103,000 COVID reimbursement for retirees, things like that. So I'm not asking you to to give me that answer tonight, but when you all go back and have your audit meeting internally or whatever, if you could just um, raise that, um, I had asked that. If we say stay super, super conservative and keep it at 200, that's what greater minds than me decide. But I was always told, because I remember sitting down with budgets initially saying, oh, this is a great thing. And it was told to me that if you're projecting and something comes in and it's an anomaly, either way, that's okay. But if it goes consistently, that really isn't budgeting wisely or appropriately. So unless that's changed in, in years. Of, um, and then the, the, so if you could just carry that to whomever. Sure. Um, and I could be way off base, but uh, the last two times I think there was agreement. So like I said, this year we had large amounts of cash in the banks because of the high school and the DPW. We almost had $100 million and we make interest of that. So that spiked it. I'm just thinking when I go home, my husband cries about the tax bill. He, he 
he's watching this, which he probably is. Um, and then uh, I just want to note that I'm really happy to see that under the recreation fund for the longest time because of COVID, um, we haven't really seen any encouraging numbers uh, because of circumstances, uh, despite the fact that we have uh, Joe Conley, our uh, recreation director and our Parks and Rec Commission that have done unbelievable jobs with the programs they have. So I'm really, really excited that uh, they've only expended 88% of their budget. They're over they're like, what is it, 118, $118,000 collected, so. And then my off the road comment and last comment is, uh, besides uh, move receipt of this report, um, when it's an appropriate time, and if you know the answer now, that's great. Um, I know the last audit meeting that I sat in when I was chair, so that's two, three years old, three years ago, um, when we first started discussing opera funding. It was my understanding um, after that meeting that opera funds would be uh, overseen, administered, audited, and federal submissions by the town, comptroller, and Powers and Sullivan. And one of the questions I had was um, about an annual or biannual report of opera funding. It is I haven't seen that, so I'm just wondering, am I still asking too soon or is it coming soon? It is my understanding that the town manager is working on preparing this report as he will be coming back with a revised framework. So that will be the time when he will present all the expenditures under ARPA. I just gave you a summary to have an idea of how much we got in and how much we spent to date. Mm -hmm. But we will have, you will have more details, I believe, soon coming. Okay. He's working on the report. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair, for that leeway. All done. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Hurd? Thank you. Thank you for the report. It seems like we get one of these every month, so time flies, I guess, when you're having fun. Um, you tell the town manager on the ARPA funding, the report, he's running out of time. So I assume we'll get that in the next month and a half. Um, just a general comment, and this has nothing to do with you. This would be directed towards somebody sitting in that seat. And next time you give one of these quarterly reports, there'll be a new name tag there. So I think, you know, something that strikes me that you would think is a good thing is that we have underexpended some of our budgets. But then you go down the line and it says vacancy, vacancy, vacancy. And it seems like in all the departments we're experiencing, I don't know if I'll call it a crisis, but a lot of vacancies where, you know, we didn't have an economic development coordinator for a while. We're working with other towns in the 2025 event. And they're like, oh, who's your economic development coordinator? And it just seems like we do have a lot of vacancies, both on the town side and on the union side. And we know there's a lot of transfers on the union side due really squarely to pay. I don't know what is causing the transfers and the vacancies on the town side, but I think it's something that, you know, in the coming months we w we're going to want to sit down and talk to the new town manager about to make sure that we're retaining the town. For years and years in this town, we had the same talent that were department heads and that worked in the planning department, and so we have to make sure that we as a town don't have so much turnover that members of the select board don't know who department heads are, who the transportation planner is. Um, so again, that's not for you. That's a discussion that I think we as a board are going to have to have at some point, but it is sort of a stark item on this report that jumps out to me is just all of these budgets are underfund are underspent because of vacancies. So thank you. So it's not only leaving uh, people leaving the town but also retirements yeah. as well. And it takes a while to fill the positions. Well they might be following us, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Diggins, please. <laughs> I'm sorry. Speak your mind. Yeah well they might be following us, you know Mr. Hurd, meaning that we had <laughs> four New members in four years here, you know. So and just recently we've become stable. And I'll show you this: they're not going to work for the MBTA. So and I'll, I just say that by by virtue of saying, like every place I know is having problems, you know, finding people. You know, the 
um, the Central Transportation Planning Staff, which is the staff for the Boston um, Region Metropolitan Planning Organization. They have people leaving. It's just it's just hard, I mean, for everyone, you know, to to find people and to retain people. And last time you told me, and it was re really reassuring because you mentioned interest rates this time. That I mean, it's because we have a lot of money in the bank. I mean, that you know that five percent is helping us because otherwise I'd be concerned you know, when we go to uh, submit uh, issue new debt you know, uh, towards the end of the year, the beginning of the year, if that's going to come back to bite us. I mean, I'm sure to a certain extent it will. You know, I mean, I'm sure you're thinking about that. But, but uh, otherwise, um, it's a good report. Look forward to three months, two months from now, whatever. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I actually have nothing to add to the excellent observations and comments from my colleagues except my thanks. Thank you. We appreciate it. Thank you for coming tonight. Next item is the Friday night concert beer. Uh, con sorry, Friday night concert series Beer Garden at the Arlington Reservoir, proposed Fridays from June 30th to August 11th, 2023. Because this is a new uh, license by a new vendor, we've asked to have a brief. Uh, appearance by the applicant so that the board can have a discussion. Um, is Thomas Allen here tonight or on Zoom? Oh, there we go. Welcome, sir. Uh, we'd love to hear about your business, and because I know it's new to Arlington, and um, I, I do want to say I appreciate the, uh, the completeness of the application, and particularly the, uh, the safety plan and, and the server training. And uh, so we look forward to hearing about what you propose and then uh, give a presentation. The board will ask some questions and we'll take a vote. Sure. I don't have any prepared materials, That's but I want to just start off by uh, thanking the select board. I think as of today, um, we've talked to just about everybody in town. And uh, I want to say thank you to everybody in the town of Arlington because uh, we've encountered nothing but support um, from the economic development department to the planning department and uh, the clerk, everybody. Um, we're very excited to start. Um, this will be our first event. We're a new business here in Arlington. Uh, we are a fully licensed brewery. Uh, we are producing our beer here in Arlington. And uh, we started the business because we believe this community is great and this community deserves great beer. And we're excited to start sh uh, sharing that beer uh, with our friends and neighbors. Um, our location doesn't allow us to have customers on site right now. Um, it's very small. Uh, and as part of the discussions we've been having over the last couple of years, we had a discussion with Joe Conley and he's been another great supporter, uh, and he, you know, suggested that maybe we could find a way to partner up, and this is kind of the culmination of those discussions. So we're very excited to be providing uh, um, beer for uh, this event, and then the town, I believe, is sponsoring the, um, their bands uh, on Friday night as well, and it'll be at the Arlington Res, and everybody likes hanging out at the Res, so we're looking forward to having a good time. Thank you, sir. I'll turn to the board for any motions or comments or questions. Uh, Mr. Hurd. I'll move approval. Um, I'm very excited about this. <laughs> I've always been a fan of the beer garden. My first year on the board was the first time they proposed the beer garden. And it, it got some tough reception to start. I don't know what people's ideas what a beer garden was going to be. And, you know, and every year that we've had it, it's been a wild success, especially up at the Jason Russell House. It's, I mean, I don't even think you get a spot in there these days, but um, it's very cool to see an Arlington-based company. I love the email address, Tom at Drink Arlington Beer, right up my alley. Dot com. Um, and I also appreciate the Friday nights because with the boys, I have two boys, Saturdays are always a whirlwind, and it's hard, sometimes it's, hard, it's been hard in the past couple of years for me to get to the, the Saturday beer gardens, so I think going to the res is a great spot for it where the kids can do their thing. There's plenty of new, there's a new playground there and a lot for the kids there. And uh, live music is always great. So I'm excited for this. Appreciate it. Thanks. Yeah. Well, I'll second that. <laughs> Mr. Diggins? Yeah. I'll second that. And, uh, and yeah, you know, two beer gardens. You know, so, so it'll be interesting to see how that, how that works out. You know, it'll be interesting to see if there are people who go to the beer gardens on Friday and on Saturday. <laughs> so I'm sure, sure there will. No, no, and I agree with my colleague, you know. Uh, it's a, a great domain name, you know. So, so thanks for um, doing this in Arlington, you know, and I hope there's lots of success. Thank you. Mrs. Mahan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, really excited about this. Um, and I'm sure 
we'll probably be seeing you at other future town events like Town Day, perhaps with the That's beer the garden, plan, yeah. uh, the Schwamm Mill. Uh, yep, they have beer gardens, so um, we definitely like to you know keep it homegrown. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> so uh, thank you for doing this, and I know it was already noted by somebody else that anything that goes out reservoir will hit a spell check on that. So. Oh, did I spell that? O I R. <laughs> Instead of I O R. Thank you for the correction. I know it's crazy. No, I'm also a court reporter and I do transcription, so I do a lot of proofing. And you can't believe how many times people will call me up and say, you know, sometimes town meeting we had two hours extra because of colons and semicolons. So great to see you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Hurd? Then, sorry, one other question. Just to plug your business, I know you said that you can't serve alcohol on site. Do, do you, are you in retailers right now? Is there any way that people? No, not yet. Our uh, production is pretty limited. Yep. And right now we're reserving all of that production for this event. Okay. And we'll see how it goes. I hope we have enough beer for everybody. Um, I also kind of hope we sell out. Um, yep, sure. And so we'll see how it goes. Uh, but our license allows us to sell, uh, to distribute, to sell to bars and restaurants and things like that. Okay. So uh, after we get through this first series of events, then we're going to kind of assess what our inventory looks like and kind of the production plan going forward. All right. Great. Thank you. I, I, as you can tell, this was a really tough sell. <laughs> um, I do appreciate, as I said before, the completeness of the application. Uh, it's very clear that you take the server training, the alcohol service, uh, very seriously. The TIP certification was front and center and, and repeated, and that's really important to the board. And it gives us a lot of confidence that you'll be very, very careful with the safety plan. Um, and that's worked really well for Arlington, that the beer gardens have gone well because the vendors and the, and the servers are being very strict in following the, the latest standards in how to deal with, with intoxicated customers and making sure that we don't serve underage people and all the things that you do so well. So um, I don't have any other questions and comments. Anything else from the board? Uh, did anyone second that motion? Second. Second. Thank you. All right. So on a motion by Mr. Hurd and seconded by Mr. Diggins. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Congratulations. We look forward to it. Thank you very much. And uh, a couple people just joined the meeting tonight, and I wanted to just for in case you were here for the package store application at 232 Mass Ave, that has been postponed until June 26th. So we won't be taking that up tonight. I thought that might be the case, sir. <laughs> <laughs> See you later, later this month. All right. Next brings us to the consent agenda. The containing the following items, the minutes of the meeting from May 22nd, Rainbow Commission requests uh, for crosswalk paintings, banners, and a proclamation, which we do every year. Request for a contractor drain layer license from Philip McLaughlin. Reappointments to the Arlington Commission of Arts and Culture Grants Committee, uh, Andrew, and specifically Andrew Conway. Uh, reappointments to the Arlington Historic Districts Commission, Charles Berry, Beth Malopchik, David Baldwin, Beth Cohen, Stephen Makawa, and Carol T. Appointments and reappointments, rather, to the Public Memorials Committee, Alexander Salaponte, Bill Coppathorn, William McCarthy. And there's more. <laughs> the nice thing is we generally take one vote on these. <laughs> we have the Garage Band Festival on Saturday, the June uh, 17th. Uh, at Wyman Terrace, uh, presented by the Arlington Commission on Arts and Culture and Ed Blundell from the e Community Engagement Committee thereof. Uh, a re reauthorization of the beer garden that we have authorized in past years at Jason Russell House um, from June through September 23rd from the Arlington, Arlington Historical Society. Request for a special one-day beer, one beer and wine license at Robbins Memorial Town Hall for a private event by Jody and Jeremy Kyvel. Another one of those special one-day beer and wine licenses uh, from the Arlington Garden Club. Another request for special one-day beer, one beer and wine license uh, by Judy Weinberg for Arlington Friends of the Drama. Uh, another request for a one-day special beer and wine license for a private event by Robert Marchant. And uh, finally, a, another special one-day beer and wine license uh, for a private event by Jennifer Chan. Clearly, this is the season for celebrations. <laughs> so... Um, we typically don't have presentations about this, but do we have anybody here that wants to speak um, about the garage band or any of the other of the uh, special events briefly? Okay. Seeing none, I'll turn to the board. Um, Mrs. Mata, I believe you're first. Um, 
I'd like to move approval. I'd like to be able to speak correctly, enunciate. Move approval um, on all the items in consent agenda. And if I could ask the chair on uh, consent agenda item 13, um, if you could uh, perhaps this week follow up with the town manager, Mr. Pooler, uh, regarding the requ request that sort of goes piggyback. Um, with Mr. Marchand's request, uh, which I know the town manager was working on, and we're getting close to June 24th. And I thought that that was resolved, but uh, someone else called me and said that they hadn't heard anything. So if you could okay, just... Okay, so check, check in for the communication? Yes. Okay. Thank you. And that's it. Thanks. Mr. Dickens. Uh, I'll second it, and I'll also say congratulations to the Arlington Friends of Drama on their 100th anniversary that's what that's all about you know so 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 yeah you know I always thought friends of the drama and the friends of the select board because we're all about the drama <laughs> <laughs> right across the street yeah, no, no. that's it thanks. oh that's, that's spectacular it. thank you for saying so sure sure no problem. Well, Mr. Hurd yeah I just want to note um on item number nine for the beer garden Jason Russell House they've been doing this for years and I'm fine with it being on the consent agenda because the local company but there is a new vendor who is serving the alcohol it's monotony tavern it, it was a brewer in past years so this year it's going to be monotony tavern who did the food for those local for those beer gardens in past years but now they'll be doing the alcohol of the seltzers too which i just figured i'd, I'd note that as a plug from monotony tavern and just as it's not you know it's not a straight renewal from a license from last year. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. I'm sorry, were you good? Yep, good. Uh, that, that's, that's a worthwhile clarification. Um, and um, I also wanted to note the also the completeness of the alcohol safety plan, the server safety plan for Monotomy uh, Tavern. They did a good job. All those servers are TIP certified, which is the program from the state to do that. And um, so I appreciate that as well. But yeah, they were a, a known local business and well worth promoting as well. Yep, sure. Okay, so we have, and I'm sorry, I did not write down the second for the consent agenda. Was that oh, Mr. Nothing. Diggins again? It's nothing personal, Mr. Diggins, other oh. than my adult brain. Never. All right, Never. so on a motion to approve the consent agenda by Mrs. Mahan and seconded by Mr. Diggins. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? It's a 4 nothing unanimous vote. And with that, we take care of 14 items of business. Pretty nifty, huh? That takes us to item... 15, Arlington Housing Authority tenant member. Let me call up my list here. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight nominees. So just for the public's information, by state law, uh, most of the Housing Authority board members are elected by the residents of Arlington, the voters. But one position is appointed by the select board, and that position must be a uh, person must be nominated by a housing authority local tenant association. So the process the board has established is to solicit those nominations and then ask the, uh, uh, the nominees to appear uh, tonight, either in person or over Zoom. And um, just in the interest of time in the agenda, as we have did in past years, I'm going to give each person uh, two minutes to give a brief presentation. And most of the nominees have sent in materials. Um, already attesting to the which we've all read, um, and um, Mr. Hurd. Oh, yes. Um, and um, before we get started, <laughs> I believe Mr. Hurd has something to say. <laughs> yep. So I'm going to recuse myself on this item, as I've done in past for items relative to the Housing Authority. The ex current executive director is my brother-in-law. So, just as. So to avoid any appearance of impropriety. Thank you, out. Mr. Hurd. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot that at the very beginning. But All right, put, you... put crazy glue on your seats over there. That's it. We're down to three. Yeah, no, no we're down, to, we're three. down to a quorum, so <laughs> bare, the bare minimum. So, um, so that's what we're doing. And, um, and uh, Ms. Marr, do, do you uh, have anybody that you recognize on Zoom who's on our nominee list? I will say, so if anybody is of the nominees, I know we have some, some good folks here in the room. If anybody is on Zoom who is a nominee, um, 
and let me just read the list. We've got Fiorella Badilla, Charlotte Ray, Michael McGinty, Timothy O'Leary III, Roy Eisner, J. Stephen Ward, John Nealon, and Pam Hauser. So if any of you folks are on Zoom, please raise your hand because we might not recognize your name. Um, and, and before we begin with the two-minute uh, presentations, I want to thank each of the nominees for being willing to serve. We can only choose one. I think it is to your credit that your fellow residents have seen fit to nominate you, and willingness to public service is to be credited. So thank you. Let, I'm just going to start in the order I have on my list, uh, starting with Fiorella Badia. Hi. And I'm, please correct me if I'm pronouncing your last name wrong. But, uh, Badilla. Yeah, Badilla. Right. All right. Yeah. <laughs> I was being a little too careful. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to read Two minutes, please. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, dear members of the board, my name is Fiorella Badilla, and I am the current tenant representative to the Board of Commissioners for the Arlington Housing Authority. I have thoroughly enjoyed the past three years on the board as a tenant representative, and respectfully, I am very much interested in seeking your appointment for another term as a tenant representative. During my time as a tenant representative, I have quickly advanced my knowledge of the AHA policies and procedures, as well as the HUD and DHCD regulations, rules, policies, and procedures that have allowed me to contribute greatly to the business of the AHA. In addition, I have completed the Massachusetts DHCD training course for the, um, for the Housing Authority Board, for new Housing Authority Board members. I have made a positive contribution to the board in representing the needs and wishes of the tenants since I have been privileged to have served at the AHA board since December of 2020. I made small changes such as renaming the Christmas dinner, the holiday dinner, to respect all cultural and religious traditions for residents, to much larger pro projects such as beginning the Monotomy Manor Garden Project and supporting the Monotomy Manor tenants in reestablishing the Monotomy Manor tenants organization. Being bilingual has also helped me communicate effectively with Spanish-speaking tenants that also have concerns and may not easily voice them. I very much would love to continue on the board as a member who can represent the interests and aspirations of the Arlington Housing Authority residents. I am so inspired by my work with the board. I am now starting college this fall to study public policy and management. Being part of a board that takes their work seriously and whose mission is to provide and advocate for high-quality affordable housing while promoting social and economic diversity has been the best experience I have had in my professional life. I look forward to continuing my work with not only the Arlington Housing Authority Board of Commissioners, but with you, the select board as well. I appreciate the time you have taken to review my application letter. If you have any questions or would like more information, please let me know. Thank you for your time. That was two minutes on the nose. Yeah. <laughs> so, thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. Bedell. Any questions, actually? Um, I think we'll probably hear all the statements and then, um, is that all right with the board? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, thank you. And next we have Charlotte Ray. Uh, Charlotte Ray, are you in present? And let's just check Zoom. Okay, let's just take a, uh, take a note and if uh, Ms. Ray appears back on Zoom, we can uh, give her the chance. Next on uh, my list is Michael McGinty. McGinty, present. Similar check on Zoom. All right. Okay. And if any of these folks are on Zoom, uh, please do raise your hand in Zoom. Timothy O'Leary III. There we go. Good evening, sir. Good evening. My name's uh, Timothy O'Leary. I'm a tenant in Winslow Towers, apartment number 1103. And um, what's different about me is I've been there two and a half years. I'm uh, involved in the Veterans Affair, some participation in the Veterans Memorial, as well as uh, Robin's Organic Farm. And what one of the things that the benefit I see in myself is listening and coordinating because you just started a little vegetable garden that the Housing Authority built for us for knee-high and we're planting and we're going to have a, someone from Robin's Gardens, a husband and wife, uh, present themselves to teach us about vegetables and um, flowers. Uh, I'm a, also um, involved with the association at Winslow Towers um, and also I uh, have knowledge of the other six buildings of, of the authorities. I've known and had knowledge for them. As far as my personal skills, 
In negotiation, I graduated from Harvard Law School, graduate 1994 program on negotiation. I'm a retired veteran. I have skills to complete the job, and I have, uh, you know, I'm going to advocate for the tenants, and I'm going to have taught classes 40 years at Northeastern University, continue education. I own my own company, and I'm really grateful for the town of Arlington allowing me to uh, be in the housing authority and participating in these various organizations in the town. And I'd like to have the opportunity to serve on the board of commissions for the Arlington Housing Authority. And um, that's what I have to present, and I hopefully I'll, ac I'll accept your job and do a good job if you offer me the job. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Next, we have Roy Eisner. There we go. Hello. Good evening. Hi. Can you step a little closer to the microphone so that they can hear you on the broadcast? Yeah. Uh, my name is Roy Eisner, and I've been a tenant at Winslow Towers uh, for quite a few years. And lately, I've seen a lot of good things happen. We've gotten uh, a lot of things done there. And I think the two things that I'd like to work on, safety and health, and also the water uh, quality uh, and the air quality in the building, those are two things that I would be interested in. And uh, I've gave my resume, but I didn't put much in, in there other than I have a degree from uh, Wentworth Institute, and I'm also a certified public accountant. So I could run the numbers good and, uh, if we had money. And I'm interested in getting money for some of the tenant activities, the, uh, the board, not the board, but the uh, people who run the tenants association every month. They should be get a stipend and have some money for the, uh, the uh, you know, the coffee and donuts and that kind of thing. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you. you, sir. Uh, next we have Jay Stephen Ward. Ward, you want to come forward? Not as he's walking up. Um, yes, sir. One of our department heads who lives in Arlington just texted me, there's no audio on ACMI. So I know right. they're monitoring this. It, um, all right, we'll communicate that to the control room. Oh. We'll, just, uh, we'll just address the board here. Uh, good evening, Mr. Ward. Good evening. My name is John Stephen Ward. I have a few words here to share with you. Uh, when the state legislature created the Housing Authority Tenant Member of the Board of Directors, uh, it was published by DHCD in Public Housing Notice 2021-1. They failed to clearly spell out in full detail just how all of those housing authorities should go about informing all the residents on how to go about selecting the candidates for this important position. As a result, here in Arlington, less than one-third of the housing authority residents were individually notified of the position. The slam-bam approach used by HA and the town to arrive at the current batch of candidates is an embarrassment to all of us. I'm relatively certain that few in this room knows that the Arlington Housing Authority represents over $60 million in taxpayer-funded properties, and that the residents of Arlington forego over $600,000 in taxes each year to subsidize that operation. It has an operational budget in the neighborhood of $4.5 million. That's a lot of money. Widespread ignorance of the operational facts and practices of such an organization is unacceptable to me and anyone else seriously concerned with fiscal responsibility. I can no longer in good conscience allow myself to be a part of this corrupted process and respectfully withdraw my name from this body's consideration. Thank you, sir. Next, we have John Neeland. Look for John Neeland on the Zoom. If you're on the Zoom, please raise your hand. Okay, let's move on to Pam Hauser. Good evening, Ms. Hauser. 
Yeah, you can put, you can, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> there you I'm go. short, what can I say? That's right. As a lifelong resident of this town, I was born and raised in the town of Arlington. I was involved with the Housing Authority since my date of birth, since my father, Robert Hauser, was the previous, was the first director from 49 to 75. I have been past president of the Tenants Association for 10 years, and I, in the course since I moved in, I had only missed five board meetings. I feel I'm the best candidate you have for this position. I know what's going on, I know what to do, and I intend to visit every single property, try to talk to the tenants myself, and be involved. I know what's going on, and I feel that I am your best candidate. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hauser. So let's circle back to the list of candidates that we did not hear from, and I might need a little help from colleagues, but um, well, I, I will just let you identify yourself. Anybody in the room who is a nominee or anybody on Zoom, the nominee, please raise your hand at this time. Okay, seeing none, I'll turn to the board for discussion and motions. I have two options. <laughs> Mrs. Yeah. Mahan. I think we're hesitant because we, <laughs> we want to point more than one, but uh, there only can be one. Um, <clears throat> I think a, another good opportunity for here tonight is um, you all may have met face to face, not just virtually, but this may be the first time. So um, I would encourage uh, everyone because I've, I've heard a lot of energy and enthusiasm. <clears throat> I myself, I didn't know I lived in the manor. When I was a kid, uh, 103 A Gardner Street, four Memorial Way, and then got married, and my parents and remaining siblings lived on Fremont Street. So uh, my dad served in the Korean War, so we were in the veterans' housing. So I, I'm, I'm very familiar with um, someone who lives in one of the Arlington Housing Authority properties. I'm familiar with uh, not the current environment, but um, I think I know I have a really a good idea of uh, all the challenges that everyone has regarded, regardless of their socioeconomic status, um, but especially um, coming from the opportunity that the town of Arlington has, you know, with Drake, Winslow, Cusack, Chestnut Manor, in, in Monotony Manor, as well as some other properties we've uh, acquired along the way. Um, so uh, it's and it's really nice to see some of these names I've heard of before, but I've never had the uh, pleasure to meet in person. Um, with that being said, I would like to nominate to appoint or reappoint Fiorella Badilla. Um, I've been very impressed with, um, besides the uh, interface between the Arlington Housing Authority commissioners, <coughs> our colleagues on the AHA, um, I've been impressed with uh, reports that I've gotten from other people in terms of Ms. Bedilla's, uh, when she first was appointed, uh, spent numerous hours down at the community uh, safety building, uh, going over uh, state law, HUD law, federal law, um, as well as other projects. And I do appreciate that up until her uh, appointment, um, we didn't have uh, representative from Monotomy Manor, but that's been rectified. Um, now, would I like to see more for everything, for all the sites I named? Of course I would. Um, and I, I also appreciate that uh, Ms. Bedilla, as well as the rest of the Housing Authority, which in the past eight weeks I've had the opportunity to speak to Mr. Metropolis, Nick Metropolis, and Ms. Preston, Ms. Joanne Preston. Um, and I'm really encouraged that um, there are several partnerships between our colleagues on the AHA through CDBG, Community Development Block Grant, through the Community Preservation Act, which I think you're familiar with as being the former chair, <laughs> uh, uh, for getting some improvements um, to the Arlington Housing Authority projects. Um, granted, they do receive federal funds, money, money from, the, from HUD, but it's also places where Arlington residents live and um, whether it's new roofs, the electricity issue. Um, I know I've worked with Ms. Bedilla and others um, on a very small role coordinating that. So that, that would be my motion. Thank you. Mr. Biggins? 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I will be happy to second that. You know, uh, Mrs. Mahan has been my plus one on this. I mean, just why I waited for you to talk because we, we talked uh, this morning because I wanted to get some insights I mean, as to how she felt you know, about this because that was going to mean a lot. And so I was very happy to hear that, you know, you were very favorably um, um, disposed, you know, towards um, Ms. Videla, you know, and, and, and it, after I read the, the, uh, the material that we got, I was still very favorably disposed. I mean, but I mean, when we get to hear from people, that gives you uh, an even stronger impression. And, and certainly, you know, a couple of candidates tonight have impressed me even more. You know, but I mean, one of the reasons I was very much in favor of Ms. Um, Videla and, uh, and the first opportunity we had I mean, was for that element of diversity. I mean, uh, uh, and, and so uh, I think you've done very well I mean, um, in three years. I mean, I mean, you, you are uh, very young, you know, and you had a lot to learn, and you've risen to the occasion, you know, and, and that's really what I wanted to see, and I'm, I'm glad to see that you're taking that now and launching yourself, I mean, even deeper, you know, into uh, this kind of work, I mean, and I think you will do very well, and, and, and not only personally, but also benefit, you know, the people who, I mean, could use, I mean, the type of um, knowledge that you'll bring, you know, and, and on top of that, you know, you got a recommendation I mean, from the executive director, I mean, which says a, a whole lot uh, to me, you know, because uh, Mr. Nagel, I've had conversations with Mr. Nagel, you know, and, and he has some really good ideas, I mean, and there's a, a, a lot he wants to do, you know, with the AHA, and I think with Monotomy and Anna, um, specifically, I mean, and so, so I think, in you know, the combination of you and him and, and uh, ongoing collaborations perhaps with, uh, not ongoing, but hopefully some collaborations with, with the board and the select board, you know, we can, we can do some things, I mean, that can really help this town, help the you know, people who need the facilities of, of, of an Avenue Manor and the, the, the town at large. I mean, so I want to get a heartily second, you know, Ms. Mahan's motion. Thank you, Mr. Diggins, and uh, I will also support the motion, and I want to reiterate what I said before. I wish we could appoint uh, the whole lot of you, you know, that you are, your commitment to your community is admirable. I think that, that you should feel uh, proud that you were nominated by your ten associations, and, you know, I think my view is uh, when you have an incumbent who's done a good job, they, uh, they deserve another, uh, uh, another term. And uh, so any further discussion? So on a nomination by Mrs. Mahan to appoint Fiorella Bedilla to an additional term and seconded by Mr. Diggins. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? It's a 3-0 unanimous vote. Thank you, Ms. Bedilla, and thank you to all of you who are willing to serve. We can uh, recall Mr. Hurd. Thank you very much. William Mulhouse, Thank you. Have a good evening, ma'am. Okay, um, we call Mr. Hurd. Thank you. I've uh, been informed that by the control room that the audio has been restored to ACMI. Um, so thank you to the... Uh, community member who let us know about that. All right, we'll wait for Mr. Hurd to return. And we have, uh, brings us to item 16, appointment to the Disability Commission. Do we have a Janice Kagan Tuber, to, uh, I'm sure I'm mispronouncing that name, with us this evening in the hall or by Zoom? Mahars, Ms. Mars checking. Uh, Ms. Mar, do you see, do you see uh, our, our, our uh, nominee, our appointee? Seeing none in Zoom. I am familiar with, with, uh, with the, nom the uh, nominee, actually. I served with her on the Remote Participation Study Committee, so I don't see her in the room either tonight. Um, so, you know, I would turn to my colleagues for a preference about whether we were to proceed or, or uh, delay a uh, table to another meeting. I'm happy to move approval on your recommendation. Um, I'll second it, and if the chair 
perhaps through the select board's office, could just follow up with Ms. Kagan Tober, and I apologize if I'm saying that wrong. Um, <clears throat> if maybe at the next meeting, <clears throat> which she could be here either in person or remote, just so we could have a, a face to the name. So I like that. Thank you, Mr. Diggins. I'm fine with that. Yeah, um, I, I will happily vouch uh, vouch for uh, Ms. Kagan Tuber. Uh, she was a a very helpful and insightful member of the Remote Participation Study Committee and I think admirably represented the interests of the disability community and of the commission. So clearly understands their work, um, was a pleasure to work with. So I think that's a good call and I will invite her to, uh, to come before so we can get to know her at the next meeting. Any further discussion? Got a motion uh, to appoint by, uh, to confirm the appointment by Mr. Hurd and seconded by Mrs. Mahan. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous 4-0 vote. But I'm having to keep up with the math tonight. <laughs> We've got. Okay. That brings us to item 17 for approval. All alcohol license transfer for ZAMSA. We have Ravi Raj, Raj Karnakar at 434 to 436 Massachusetts Avenue. Is uh, this applicant with us this evening, either in person or on Zoom, or their representative? Please. Uh, Welcome, and uh, please correct my pronunciation of your name if necessary. We want to get that right for the record. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Good evening. Good and you can uh, move the microphone back up to your uh, to your level. Good evening. Good evening. Welcome. Uh, our attorney is supposed to be joining the gym too, but uh, I'm not sure. What's the name of the attorney? Mr. Dan. Dan. Thank you. We'll see if we can locate. I see him. I'll come over to Okay, we'll bring him in. Just give us a moment. Mr. Briansky is coming up. All right, Mr. Briansky, you should be able to unmute and go to video if you want to. There we go. Good evening, sir. Can you hear us? And I'll remute it here. Give a moment for the Zoom to work itself out. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Okay, my name is Daniel Briansky. I'm an attorney in Boston, and I represent the applicant. Uh, the applicant is seeking an all-alcoholic beverages license for the premises at 434-436 Massachusetts Avenue. Uh, it's my, I'm, I'm led to believe that they are going to be serving food from Nepal, which is a small country in Asia, as everybody's aware. And uh, I, I also believe that the, uh, the manager of the LLC as well, who is, also the, who is also the proposed manager of the, for the liquor license, uh, Mr. Raj Karnikar, I hope I'm not mispronouncing his name. Uh, I believe he is or he will be very, very shortly TIP certified. And I believe there's another member of the, of the, uh, uh, of the group of the LLC, uh, Jenny Tamang. She also is or will be very shortly TIP certified. Thank you, sir. Uh, did you have any further comments? Okay. Um, Please. Good evening, ma'am. Uh, my name is Ravi Rajkarnikar. Uh, me, and as uh, our attorney just mentioned, we are already TIP certified. And I'm also self uh, certified. I've been in this food industry for more than 35 years. And we are hoping to, we're planning to open a restaurant here in Arlington. The reason why we chose Arlington because we used to live in Arlington. My partner here, she graduated from Arlington High. My daughter, she graduated from Arlington High. And we love Arlington. But now we don't live in Arlington, but we love Arlington community. And the food we're trying to serve is uh, basically going to be South Asian food. It's not only Nepali. It's going to be Nepali, Tibetan, Indian. And the most likely, it's going to be a little bit of fusion, too. So uh, that's why we're uh, applying for the liquor license for the, uh, the premises 434. Currently, it's uh, uh, Taipei. And the Jomsa is a Tibetan word. That means a gathering place. So I hope uh, we get the permit for this. Thank you very much.
Thank you, sir. I'll uh, turn to the board for any discussion or motions. Mrs. Mahan. Um, I would like to move approval. And were you Mr. Raj Kanikar? Sure. Is, is, is that you? And I, <clears throat> I, I think I heard you, but I, my, I got a little ringing in my ear all of a sudden. So both the uh, servers that it was representative represented, we were told that um, they are or will be. You're saying both are TIP certified yes. as of tonight? Today, we got those certified today. Okay. okay. And I have the certification here. Okay. And will you be the manager? Yes. Okay. Um, one of the things when um, we're giving out the uh, alcohol licenses, whether to restaurants, package stores, others, um, to really, I know others, um, Beer Garden is. Um, as you know, being a resident of Arlington, Arlington is very active in going in and doing checks um, at certain times of the year that we don't even know when they are. So we do have a very vigorous program. And, and when we found the few violations that happen, it's almost 99% that the two to three TIP certified employees and our manager aren't there just a culmination of, you know, I, I know what the restaurant business is like. My family also has been in it for many years. Um, and it's that one day that nobody's there who knows what is to be done. So I, I would recommend that um, in your employee handbook uh, that you have uh, something that if none of the tip servers are available, that you, you know, have a backup plan or maybe you look at, Maybe that's a, a case, something that never happens. But if you see that it is, maybe you need to do um, a fourth or a fifth. And also my um, approval would be contingent upon what our building commissioner, Mr. Champa, has. Um, he has no objections to your license, but he does have some conditions. Um, and I believe you are aware of them. If not, your attorney is. So the approval would also be subject to those conditions being met. Um, which I know. we're aware of that, and uh, we're gonna we're planning to train more people in wherever we're gonna hire for the tips also, as okay. well as for the service also, and we're also uh, aware of, uh, as you say, um, we're gonna be hiring all the licensed. We, uh, we have a plan to re uh, renovate, so we're gonna be planning uh, hiring all the licensed people. So we're not gonna have any issues with that. And you will have some Nepalese food. Yes. Okay, because my daughter-in-law's. Kathmandu, and her mom's over. Oh, so nice. um, <laughs> first time I met her, I went to another restaurant that was Nepalese to say, is, is she married or widowed, red, not black, certain This food. is not going to be typically Nepali, Nepali only. It's going to be a little fusion also. Okay. Because I've been working in the U.S. also. I work at the Hyatt Hotel. Mm -hmm. and currently, I'm working at the Lay Hospital in Burlington mm -hmm. as a sous chef, executive sous chef. So I have many so different knowledge about different ethnic foods. So it's going to be combined food, not only Nepali, typical Nepali food. Oh, no. Well, I, I look forward with Ama. We'll be in with my grandsons, and we'll let you know how many stars we give you. Thank All you, right, Mr. Thank Chair. you. We'll be very honored to have you. My Nepalese <laughs> cooking, I can barely, I don't even think I've gotten a star yet, but I'm trying. <laughs> thank well, you. Great. Now I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Hurd. I'll second the motion and just say thank you for choosing Arlington to open a business and I'll look forward to your common VIX application thank because you. that's when we get to see the menus and yeah. uh, then uh, our uh, taste buds uh, start to tingle a little bit. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll say the same thing. You know, so, so I'll thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you, Mr. Hurd. I agree wholeheartedly. And since Ms. Ms. Mahan has given you, like me, the, the hard speech, I can go, I can go easy. You know, say, I mean, not only did you have me at Nepalese, but you really had me at Fusion. You know, so, so I'm really looking forward to that. And of course, the Arlington background um, makes me even happier to you know, support this. So thank you. Great, um, and I will just add that we're delighted that you love the town, and I want to say welcome back home. Thank you very much. On a motion by Mrs. Mahan, uh, further discussion by the board? Motion by Mrs. Mahan for approval, uh, condition subject to conditions, and uh, seconded by Mr. Hurd. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Four nothing, unanimous vote. We look Thank forward you. to having you back for the other license. Thank you very much. Thank you.
Okay, that brings us to open forum. So except in unusual circumstances, any matter presented for consideration of the board shall neither be acted upon nor a decision made the night of the presentation in accordance with the policy under which the open forum was established. It should be noted that there is a three minute time limit to present a concern or request. So if you are on Zoom and you wanna participate uh, and give a three minute presentation to the board on topic of your choice, uh, as a reminder, this is the, uh, the uh, remaining opportunity for public comment in the meeting and the only opportunity. Uh, please raise your hand in Zoom at this time and your name will be noted. And uh, if we have people both in Zoom and in person who want to participate, I will alternate between the two platforms. So um, with that said, the people in the room, Mr. Foskett. I believe I saw his hand first, but we'll, we'll get to everyone. Get my trusty timer. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and honorable members of the board. I appreciate the opportunity to speak to you tonight. My subject is the substance and nature of the proposed override vote, which, you, which is on your agenda this evening. There's no argument that we need to address the deficit that lies ahead, but I have two fundamental issues with how we may, might go forward. The first is the nature of our current and planned deficit spending. And the second is town transparency and the degree to which the voters have a real, not a Hobbesian choice. I'm gonna talk about spending and expenses, not about the date of the next override, which I think is akin to moving desk chairs on the Titanic. From 2018 to 2023, Arlington taxes have grown at the rate of 5.1% a year. The average inflation rate has been 2.4%. Average per, house, uh, average per capita income has been 3.8% in that period. According to town manager Pooler's long range model, our 2.5% growth per year will add $22.2 million over the next five years of the long range plan. This doesn't address, address the deficit, which demands that the town raise another $46.9 million. And if the select board recommends additional spending level, as proposed, of $7.3 million, then the taxes cumulatively over the next five years will be an additional $27.7 million. That all adds up to $94.7 million. The average household um, tax burden will raise, with, with the deficit and the ads, will raise not the $464 per household discussed at the Long Range Planning Committee, but actually $986 per household, which is about 10% of the most recent year's average household tax rate. I strongly recommend that in addressing the deficit, the board separate the deficit from any additional spending and give taxpayers the ability to make a true choice. Even with the $7 million, we will have a $10 million deficit in 2028. And if we have the additional spending, it'll be a $21 million deficit. Now the current deficit in 26, I think it is, is $8 million. Think about the size of the override we will need to address a $21 million deficit. It's enormous. So I think I just strongly urge that you give taxpayers the choice. Take care of the deficit or increase the deficit which is what you'd actually be asking. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. I'm turning to Zoom. Ms. Marty, do you see anybody with their hand raised in Zoom? Same okay. Answers. We'll go back to, the, I believe, uh, Mr. Radosha. We have a couple other people here with us. Good Thank evening, you sir. All and good evening. Can you state your name for the record? Oh, please? Bob Radosha, Columbia Road. I'm here to uh, speak to my letter that I sent about a week ago as a follow-up. Um, seven years ago, I sent the same letter uh, to the board and it went somewhere. I don't know where. I tried to track it down but couldn't. And it basically says the same thing. Winter Street, there's a section of the street that's about 400 linear feet that's under 24 feet across curb to curb. And I've been told that the minimum should be 24 feet and that it should have a 10 foot wide traffic aisle. Now, 10 feet and 
What we have down there is that when they're parking on both sides of the street, we're running short, people can't get out of their driveways, and people can narrowly get through. Constantly, people are hearing about trucks and rigs that can't, they're blowing their horn, trying to get through it. And recently, uh, in fact, last week, uh, the school has been uh, get receiving a lot of complaints from neighbors about parking. They park into their driveways and all of that. The school has been very good about it, very attentive to trying to deal with the uh, issue. And last week, there was a police detail down there to uh, oversee uh, some program they were having one night. And what they were doing was trying to keep them from parking on both sides of the street in that particular area. And um, I, I, I understand DOT requires the 24 feet and whether that can be uh, worked through them or not, but a simple solution is to add about three or four no parking signs on the left side of the street where you have them going up just beyond the school and then the bad part, that's, that's where it begins to drop down in the, the width. And to the end of the tennis courts, then it goes back to 24 feet. And it's, it's possible if 24 feet works, you can make it happen. Seven and a half feet is what tip, the typical car is off the curb. And so seven and a half, seven is 15, and a 10 foot lane, that doesn't cut it. But uh, to have no parking on that side of the street, at least down, to the back side of the tennis courts, then it widens out a little more than 24 feet. So um, if uh, I'd like some, I'm asking that I be involved somehow when somebody wants to look at it. I'd like to take my 100 foot tape down there and show them where it is and what it is. And we can park some cars and show them what it's like. So okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Still see no hands in ray, uh, raise. I believe we have some more speakers in the room. Dr. Elson here. Please state your name and any relevant positions up to your comments. Thank you. Um, I'm Kirsten Allison Anthe. I'm at Governor Road and I'm the chair of the Arlington School Committee. So first, I thank the select board for their collaborative work over the past few months and also your leadership in bringing this override to the table. I very much encourage you all to vote in the affirmative. Because I'm on school committee, I'm going to focus on the school side of the plan. The commitments outlined include inc allowing the school budgets for general and special education to increase annually. In addition, there are new increases to the school budget base that will allow for the implementation of our strategic plan. These increases have been negotiated over months in the Long Range Planning Committee. We, on the school side, have looked at our request and cut numbers or stretched out timelines in order to decrease the total as much as we could. If the voters approve the override, the Arlington Public Schools will see increases for FY24 of 400,000 beyond what was already approved by town meeting, 3.1 million for FY25 and 1.7 million for FY26. This additional investment would allow the schools to implement this plan. The significant dollar amounts additions in FY25 and 26 are heavily weighted towards providing the district the opportunity to bargain with the teachers, paraprofessional units, more competitively with the intention of increasing compensation. Other initiatives include implementing a robust multi-tiered system of support, which is critical for, to uh, provide inclusive access to the core curriculum for all students and to improve the experiences of students who have individualized, individualized education plans. They also include in creating a pathway to teacher program to improve hiring, especially of diverse staff, and a welcome center that will enable centralized registration, better communication, and an improved experience for our families who do not speak English as their first language. One big question that's come up is, why now? I feel it's incredibly important to move forward in this moment for several reasons. First, we want to build on the momentum of the development of the strategic plan rather than let it languish on the shelf. We've identified many aspects of APS that can use improving and how to improve them. I want us to implement these changes now so we can offer a better experience for all our students. Second, our students have been through several difficult years because of COVID, which has significantly exacerbated gaps in academic achievement for all students. Many components of this plan help address this learning gap. Finally, teacher hiring and retention has become more difficult and our current offered salaries do not allow us to improve our standing. The override would enable us to do a lift of salaries to get us at parity with the town manager 12 
and I feel will significantly aid our ability to retain our teachers and to hire the best. Thank you again for putting this forward tonight, and I hope that on behalf of Arlington's teachers, students, and families, you will vote strong, you will strongly consider a positive vote. Thank you. Thank you. Any other speakers on Zoom or in the room for open forum? Seeing none. Ms. Murr, seeing none. That concludes open forum. Thank you each for taking the time to speak out. That moves us to item 19, discussion and vote, Mass Ave outbound bus lane and safety improvements. Mr. Alessi, Senior Transportation Planner, Philip Cherry, and Benjamin Case from the MBTA. I think some of these folks may well be online. Are any of them in the room tonight? Um, so let's hope they're all online. So if, uh, if folks would assist us by raising your hands. It looks like we're all, oh, so Mr. Alessi is on. As usual, Ms. Marr is on top of things. So we'll just get folks a chance. Um, and oh, I, there you go. Good evening. Uh, I look Good forward evening. to meeting you in person, but this will have to do for now. <laughs> uh, welcome welcome to the to the town, by the way. Mr. Alessia, I believe, is our new transportation planner. Thank you, Chair. Yes, you're right. I'm real on. thrilled to have you, sir. Uh, please proceed. So thank you, Mr. Chair. My name is John Alessi. <clears throat> I'm the new senior transportation planner for the town. I started about a month and a half ago. Very much looking forward to meeting you all in person. Um, tonight, I'm here to discuss a project that I would um, that I bring to the finish line that um, the former assistant director of the planning community development office, Kelly Linema, was started, but now I'm um, taking over it right now. The request tonight is in regard to the mass up outbound bus lane and safety improvements that the town has um, jointly worked with the MBTA on in the past. And I'm joined by Philip Cherry from the MBTA, who is the project manager for this, um, for this initiative. So um, I'll let Philip go over the majority of the presentation, the design, but this evening we're requesting um, approval of the roadway layout that has been designed by the MBTA. And Philip will get a little bit more to that. And then the second request is a conditional um, approval of an extension of a 24 seven bus lane. So I'll repeat those requests again at the end of the presentation, but right now I'll um, hand it over to Philip. Great. <laughs> Welcome, Philip. Uh, do you have a presentation to sh uh, share on your screen, or are you just going to speak? I do. I do. I'm going to share. I don't know if you can get a camera on your own to share. I can watch you through the slides. I'm happy to share that. Oh, happy to share that. Um, and. Yeah, well, if you just pause for a second, I think that the, we're having some problems with your audio quality. Is there anything you can do? I thought it was just me. I can't yeah. understand. Yeah, is there anything you can do uh, to get closer to your microphone or improve your microphone, sir? Sure, let me, let me do my best to uh, get closer to the yeah. I still can't understand. Yeah, yeah. If I'm the only one, continue on. on. No, I'm, I'm having okay. some trouble as well. I think we need to get closer. There. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think our... Um, Mr. Leslie, could you say a few words just for an audio comparison for audio levels? Sure. Um, this working better? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Thank you, and thank you. Sorry about <laughs> that. Ahead, proceed. I'm, um, I'm going to step away for some water, folks, but please, please continue. I'll be able to hear you from the other room. Okay. Is this, is this working okay for you guys? Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Yep. Apologies for that. I did. Swap microphones on me there. Uh, as, as John mentioned, and, and maybe uh, one of you said, um, my name is Philip Chair. I'm a senior project manager um, and the acting transit priority director here at the MBTA. Excited to be here with you tonight and appreciate uh, your time. Uh, this is a uh, request again, as, as John mentioned, um, for, for two approvals. We will walk through the project um, as quickly and efficiently as we can here. Uh, this is for a, a grant funded project uh, from MassDOT's Shared Streets and Spaces program. Uh, that grant was applied for back in March of, of 2022. Um, that request was for approximately $133,000 for both uh, transit priority improvements as well as safety improvements, mainly in the area of Mass Ave between uh, roughly Lafayette and Elwife Parkway. Uh, we entered into funding agreement of 
in August of last year, and I've been working on the design. There was both turnover on our end, as well as obviously John being new. I joined the MBTA in the fall of last year, so we've each sort of helped carry this along the finish line in different ways. Again, just some context of where this is, Mass Ave, right near Air Wife Parkway, and then also some proposed improvements to the minor intersection where Boulevard and Lafayette meet each other. We identified some potential improvements there over the course of the project. Looking at the transit priority scope and benefits of this project, I think many of you are familiar with the existing, what we would say, inbound AM peak only lane that exists on Mass Ave now that's shown on the screen there. That was implemented as a pilot measure several years ago and then affirmed to be there more permanently. This would extend that from Boulevard, where it ends now, all the way to Air Wife Parkway. As you'll see in the later slide, that extension would be formalizing it through another couple hundred feet of red paint. It would also formalize some of the lane lines in this area. If you drive in this area, you can see this lane right here actually gets squeezed down a bit. So we would be working, it would not be changing the number of lanes or the lane configuration per se, other than extending that bus lane. But we did notice there were some narrow general travel lanes that we also had worked with Kelly and now John to try to correct as part of this. And then in the outbound or northbound direction, many of you are probably aware of the bus lanes in Cambridge that end at Air Wife Parkway. This would be extending that lane over the town line to the existing bus stop there just north of Sunapee Road, at which location the bus lane would end and buses would exit that bus stop and continue north. So really just providing that transit priority through the intersection over the town line. There would be no parking impact as part of this. I'll touch on that a little bit more in a following slide. Then there's a safety element to this. The primary, there's sort of three different elements. So I'll walk through each of those in this slide and the following two. The primary benefit would be a proposed new rectangular rapid flashing beacon or RFB at the Mass Ave at Lafayette intersection. Both John and my predecessor in writing the grant identified this as a need for pedestrian safety. So you can see there's an existing crosswalk here. These two figures I just overlaid on the image. Those don't exist now, but this is roughly what this would look like. So additional traffic control to help with pedestrian crossing here as this was identified as a safety need. The next safety component would be precluding, that would be sort of eastbound to northbound left turns from Lafayette Street onto northbound Mass Ave. Through an observation, it was determined that there was a safety impact of turning left. There were some sight line issues and that it would be safer to formally preclude those left turns through a no left turn sign that would be placed at this location. And then the third component is, this is a little bit further. This is at the away to the west, just off of Mass Ave at the Lafayette at Boulevard intersection. You'll see this in plan view shortly in an upcoming slide. But right now this intersection at Lafayette and Boulevard is a fairly wide sort of undefined intersection and it would be using striping and flex posts, vertical flex posts to try to provide some traffic calming at this location. There was some feedback that folks sometimes speed through here towards Boulevard. Additional design nuance on the parking side. We had initially proposed as part of this design to eliminate these two parking spaces. However, and John can provide additional feedback if requested. There was a little bit of pushback from some of the businesses right at this site, especially from the physical therapy center who felt like their customers needed to have direct access to those spaces given some of their mobility limitations. So those two spaces are slated to remain as part of this design. However, we are requesting to see if it would be possible if this site is ever redeveloped in the future to codify as part of that redevelopment plan, 
that these two spaces be sort of given, be removed, and this space would be dedicated to transit priority to provide greater continuity for the bus lane in this area. From what I hear from conversations with John and Kelly before she left, there's not a specific timeline on this site, but it's an interest we would have to try to formalize that for, you know, in the future. I'll just chime in quickly, Philip, to give some context as well. So after starting with my position, I went to all these business owners and spoke with them. It was just the Peak Performance Physical Therapy Center that did have some concerns about removing those parking spaces. They felt that any of their clients who are limited in mobility, you know, usually post-surgery, would have difficulty accessing the center without those parking spots there. Other than that, none of the other business owners showed any objections to it. So we felt that, you know, once the adjacent parcel is developed, redeveloped in the future, that it would be a good opportunity to create some incremental change in prioritizing transit in this area of the town. Thanks, John. So this is a plan view of what that would look like. This existing bus lane exists up to Boulevard. So this is already in existence, so it would really be extending that inbound or southbound bus lane to El Rapport Parkway. This segment of bus lane here sort of gets the northbound buses and the Cambridge Transit Priority bus lane through the intersection and up to this bus stop here just north of Sunapee Road, where the red paint and transit priority would end. And then this signifies the proposed new rectangular rapid flashing beacon at the existing crosswalk. This no left turn sign signifies the proposal to preclude left turns out of this. Traffic could reroute to Lafayette Street or to other intersections in this neighborhood. And then this intersection shows the traffic calming here, which really kind of tees up Boulevard into a little bit more of a right angle and provides some traffic calming so that folks can't just sort of fly through this area as we receive some feedback that sometimes there is some speeding there. As far as next steps on the project, the plan is to finalize engineering in the coming months. It is a fairly, you know, as these projects go, fairly straightforward design and then implement in through the fall and maybe early winter of this year. But still goal would be to implement in calendar 2023. And then typically the MBTA and other municipalities enters into a memorandum of understanding to identify maintenance responsibilities on projects like these. So which entity is responsible for, you know, maintaining and operating which element of the project. And I believe that was it. So, Phil, if you can go back to the design, I can go over the requests again for the board. So, as I mentioned, everybody, the first request is to approve the roadway layout design that you're seeing in front of you right now. That has the traffic calming at Boulevard and Lafayette, the RRFB at the Lafayette Street crosswalk, and then the extension of the inbound bus lane and then the extension of the outbound bus lane. I'll point out there's no impact parking with this design. And the second request is to approve the conditional removal of the two parking spots. I don't know if you can point out to him, Phil. Thank you. So conditional only upon the adjacent parcel being redeveloped to create a 24-7 bus bike lane. So with that, thank you so much for your consideration. And Philip and I will be here to answer any questions you may have. Did Mr. Diggins have a first crack at this? Thank you, Mr. Chair. So the rest of the bus priority lane is still going to be, it will not be 24-7, right? Just this new section will be 24-7? Correct. It will be everything up to Boulevard and the inbound or southbound direction will remain peak only. It will be essentially this block that is formalized to be more permanent. And you can see here the sort of skip striping indicates that there's a shared bus right turn lane. You know, we found through our analyses that it's the a.m. peak hour in which buses are the most delayed. 
And then in the outbound direction, this this segment here would be would be 24 seven building upon this shared bus right turn lane northbound coming from the Cambridge line. Okay, I thought I thought I understood. And so southbound is going to be 24 seven at some point or it's always going to be only rush hour. So the, the inbound is, you know, extends to the existing uh, AM peak only lane extends to the north off of what you see on the screen here. Right. That will remain AM peak only. Um, technically, that that segment ends right here at Boulevard. So this this segment here um, between Boulevard and AY Brook Parkway, as we stand now, is proposed to be 24 seven. Right, okay. We understand that that you know. Transitioning from a peak only section for several blocks to a one block of uh, of 24 seven, you know, there may be some some folks who are who are staying in this lane. We, under, we understand that, but we do feel like the benefit overall um, is worthwhile, especially when when buses need it the most. So all of the existing uh, bus lane north of here would remain as, as AM peak only. Okay, all right, that's fine. So I, thought I, I thought I understood the right way, but and then but then you said something that made me a little bit confused. And what you said was that the, it's during the morning rush that the, that area the, um, from from Boulevard the, um, or from Lafayette the, to uh, Route 16 is most heavily used or the buses are most um, affected by the traffic. So I guess I'm just trying to understand why it is that we need to um, make it 24-7 in that stretch. Did you in, this, yeah. in this specific stretch? Yeah. Why not my, Why not just make it also, I mean, um, um, only during the, during the morning rush? Part of it is based on uh, queuing analysis for buses. So when the traffic is higher in the morning, uh, those queues extend further. So if you, the, the more priority you have for buses, the greater, uh, the, the greater, what's the right way to phrase this? The, when the traffic is heaviest in the morning for buses to receive the most priority, you want a, a longer area dedicated to those buses. Um, certainly there are other periods throughout the day when, when traffic is higher, but on the whole, uh, those queues are less um, than, than during the morning peak. So we felt like at least retaining this stretch on a more consistent basis does maintain uh, that priority for buses. And I, you know, I think broadly throughout our network, we've, we've found that when you have more consistent and long, longer areas of, of the red paint and, and designating buses, that sort of you know, legibility for drivers, if you will, uh, does provide some, some network benefits. I understand that, I mean, but my question though was why, why, why not I mean, make it all the only for the morning peak, I mean, as it is now. I mean, I'm just trying to understand the rationale for moving, making the new section 24 seven. Because the, 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 the peak, I mean, the morning peak is apparently when the 77 is affected, I mean, um, by the, the traffic, the morning traffic, right? Correct, that's, that's when the traffic is most intense and when a longer area of transit priority is, is the most beneficial. Uh, look, I, mean, I, I just want you to know, I mean, I'm generally supportive of this. I'm just trying to be able to I mean, when people ask me, you know, because they know that I'm very transit friendly. And, and for me, I mean, I like to take I me mean, the, 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 the priority back to Lake Street because I agree having a longer stretch will make the 77 run better. I just need to be able to explain to people why it is that that needs to be 24-7 I mean, when the peak is in the morning and that's what affects the bus most. I mean, if we, if, if come midday afternoon, um, the traffic's going in the opposite direction, I just don't understand why that needs to be 24 seven and the rest of it doesn't. Sure, let me, let me, let me try one more time and I, I'll, I'll try to do my best. So in the, in the morning you have longer queuing from general traffic. So providing a longer area of transit priority is obviously more beneficial. I think, I think if we could, we would have you know, we would have consistent 24 seven um, space for buses extending back to Lafayette. I think that the feedback on these two parking spaces and accommodating uh, the folks at the physical therapy 
you know, if you could have, if you could have had a consistent 24 seven bus lane from Lafayette, we feel like that would have provided even more legibility. So we're trying to sort of straddle the line here and, and claim what we can for transit priority while, while also, uh, you know, respecting the feedback we received from the, from the businesses, uh, at this location. I think even if, even if we're only receiving this one block at other times of day, when those queues are less, um, the analysis indicates that you don't need the same degree or same length of transit priority because you're not, um, the bus isn't sort of having to, to circumvent as long of a queue, if that makes sense. All right. All right. I'll stop now. Thanks. You know, but as I said, I'm generally supportive. I mean, I may have some other questions later on, but I'm going to stop now. So thank you. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Mr. Hurd. Thank you. Um, thank you for the presentation. Before I jump into this, I just want to make a comment generally. I don't think we have any from, well, we do have our transportation planner here. There's been a few agenda items in the past couple of months that I feel like have been dropped onto our agenda. And we come and look at the agenda on Fridays, look at it over the weekend. And for these traffic items, this happened a couple of months ago with, a, with the Appleton design. We had no idea that this was coming up the pike, none. And then we have the weekend to review the plan and try to solicit feedback. So for something like this, it would be helpful, at least for me, and maybe it's just me, to have a little bit of lead time to know that some significant redesign of one of our public ways is gonna be put on an agenda more lead time than just when we post the agenda and it gets submitted. So that's just a, a general comment because sometimes we read these and then we hear the presentation and we're kind of thinking of our questions on the fly then we're being asked to submit an approval based on what we hear just in the meeting. Um, I do appreciate that you listened to the business and took their feedback into account here. Um, a couple questions about this. So I see we're from Boulevard to El Whitebrook Parkway on, I think a little bit of confusion and you might be directionally correct, but I think we always refer to Mass Ave as eastbound yes. and westbound. <laughs> So that's where we're kind of north and south. So I'm going to call it the eastbound side. Where I, there's arrows that go right, where this is going to be a 24 7 bus priority, are cars able to go into that lane where the arrows are, or is it still just for buses to take a right onto El Wife Brook Parkway? General traffic is able to, to enter that to turn right. Um, where it's so, where the red is broken down in the dots. so so where there's the skip stripes say at yep. and, at, and at boulevard that that's sort of indicating just like if you've seen the similar skip striping for for green high friction paint for cyclists it's sort of indicating you know you have you have that specific lane use straddling that intersection as you approach elwick for parkway and you have the uh, larger skip striping there um, that is that is also to signify, you know, right turning. Certainly, if, if you had an instance in which you had eight or ten cars waiting to turn right, vehicles are allowed to enter that queue uh, further upstream from where uh, from where that skip striping starts. Yep. Uh, that skip striping is a is a fairly common, you know, at least relative to our to our transit priority lanes throughout the MBTA system. Um, there's there's dozens of other locations like that where where you have that uh, sort of curb or side running bus lane with that larger skip striping approaching a right turn lane. So um, you know it's at least consistent with other applications of that throughout the MBTA system, as well as just over the the line in in Cambridge. Uh, you can see sort of faded in the uh, I guess you would say westbound direction approaching Elwick for Parkway you can kind of see that um, as it's shown there and then several other locations along along Mass Ave in, in Cambridge as well as throughout Boston and, and elsewhere yeah that, that's what I, th I thought my my sons play a lot of hockey in Malden and Malden just restriped the entire center with uh, 
similar markings, and I have seen that there. Um, so, in just to so then there's a lane of traffic. Then the other lane of traffic, where you currently take the left turn, and I'm trying, and it could be my eyes, but that's still. I don't know if that, those are arrows or it looks like a bicyclist. <laughs> that's still a lane of traffic, right? Oh, this, this, so there's two lanes of traffic outside of the, the bus lane. That we're, so there's a lane that goes either straight or left, and then a lane that goes straight? Correct. And those two lanes are exactly as they are today. Um, yep. and, and I think I, I mentioned during my presentation, we, we've actually, we'll be doing some work to, to sort of improve some of those lane widths as you approach that intersection we noticed as we were laying this out that uh, i believe it's i believe it's the middle through lane um gets uh is is sort of deficient it's like nine feet at a few locations just because the the lane widths the the total width there is kind of an, an awkward width that's more than it should be for one amount but kind of less than another so we're we're trying to formalize that for for general traffic as well um in there so that would just be grinding out some existing like white markings and then reapplying it at a at a better spacing but the actual lane configuration would be the same as it is now for that for that general traffic okay and so you'd mentioned that no parking is being affected so right i haven't been down there recently and looked at this so between lafayette and boulevard right now there's just the two parking spaces on that stretch correct all right and then yeah so i mean i had similar thoughts as mr diggins we we did this i think back in 2018 initially when we did the pilot we came up with the time frames in the morning and the reason we did the time frames in the morning is because that's when the queuing was outside of those time frames there's it's really not a necessity for a dedicated bike lane, but because there's no queuing there. That said, I'm where the two areas are small and where there's no parking right now, I really don't have any objections if the proponents are telling me that there's a re there's a positive reason why we make that 24/7. You know, if all of a sudden we start extending it back into the business districts and farther down Mass Ave, then it's certainly a longer conversation. But again, I don't know that it's necessary, but again, I don't think it has a major impact where there's no parking spaces there currently. Cars that are taking a right can jump into that lane towards the end of it. So, I mean, I think everything here is good. I, I think it will help out in, again, in the future, would like to have a little bit more notice in case there was something on here that we didn't think was was good for the area. It helps us to have that discussion with town staff ahead of time to try to get fix it either before the meeting or at least know where we are coming into the meeting. But as it's presented, I don't see anything that causes an issue on my end. Would it be helpful? Um in the future, and I apologize if this is coming out the right field, but in the future, maybe having a presentation on a project beforehand, but not having a um, request for approval so that you can learn about the project and answer, and answer questions and then take your time to perform site visits. Is that what um, you're hearing? I, I just, where there's a, something is gonna be, oh, I just lost my screen. Where something is gonna be proposed to us such that requires a change in the traffic rules and order in the in the public ways it helps especially if there's a plan to have that sent to us ahead of time before it gets dropped on the agenda just say hey heads up this is what we're looking at to put on an agenda in the next couple of weeks let us know if you have any comments i'd be happy to do that moving forward in sorry i just thought of something else. regarding the second request um i didn't quite understand it I have a little bit of hesitation just generally voting to say that we're in the future going to remove parking spaces if some hypothetical redesign happens. And if that's what was being asked of us, then I would separate that out because I'm, again, I'm not 
quite – I think we would take a request such as removing parking spaces on a case-by-case -case basis within the totality of the plan that's being presented to us. So to just generally say in the future we commit to removing these parking spaces, I don't think I can support. Just before we get to Mrs. Mahan, um, Mr. Lessie, did you want to um, clarify at all what the, what the nature of that second um, request – requested vote of the board would be the conditional removal of the spaces? Yep, absolutely. So just to summarize, request number one, approve the current design that you're looking at on your screen right now that doesn't include any parking removal. Um, the second request is the conditional approval of the removal of those two parking spots um, between Lafayette and Boulevard Road in order to, as Philip indicated earlier, um, use that roadway space as a transit priority area so that during the peak peak hours um, or just 24 7 during the day giving those buses a little bit of extra queue length in order to um, move through the corridor and Philip I don't know if you want to add anything to that or not no I, I, I think you said it well it would just it would just formal you know I, I can understand with a with a short block between you know essentially Boulevard and NY for Parkway only a couple hundred feet um, coming off of a peak hour lane, you know, having a single block that's 24 seven presents both uh, sort of communication and design challenges for how do you sign and, and mark that change. Having, having two full blocks provides a little bit uh, more resiliency, if you will, in the face of, of queues throughout the day or, and maintaining transit priority as, as traffic conditions may change. So I, I can understand that the feedback of, of uh, you know, not sort of unconditionally approving that, but we are we are looking to try to, in, in some way, codify or at least you know, put out there that that uh, this is something that we think long term would be would be beneficial. Um, you know, to have those two spaces removed and, and have that continuity. Thank you, and I'll save my further questions for uh, for my turn. No, thank you, you. Uh, thank you, oh, Mrs. Mom, please. Okay. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> Um, I'll second my colleague Mr. Hurd's remarks regarding um, having some more lead time to review changes, you know, whether it's Mass Ave, Appleton, whether it's these uh, changes on east and westbound, which is how I know this part of Mass Ave, um, as well as up at uh, Park Ave. Uh, uh, and I heard, I believe I heard from our senior transportation planner, Mr. Lessey, which I anticipate the next time you'll be here. <laughs> Would love, you know, love to see our employees in person. Um, <coughs> that uh, I heard you say to uh, Mr. Hurd and my other colleagues uh, to provide the basically PowerPoint or presentation of plan two weeks in advance would definitely be appropriate. And if you want to just put the light face draft across every page, then that's fine. Um, just so that we have pretty much 90, 95% of it. So then, because uh, we do get an, an awful lot of questions and um, in order to best defend all these projects, which ultimately are uh, improving first pedestrian safety and then everything else falls down the line, um, we want to be able to explain that uh, appropriately for all the hard work that everybody else is doing. Um, and then for someone like me to come in and really mess it up is, uh, not doing the town or any of you all any favors. So what I'd like to do first is uh, make a motion, just one motion, um, to uh, approve the Mass Ave outward bound bus lane and safety improvements design. Um, I understand the second part, which I'm not making part of my motion, the conditional approval of removing parking spaces. Um, I, I think we discussed it enough that um, Mr. Alessi, our town manager and our t planning director will certainly have that on their sort of tickler file um, moving forward in the future um, and it may be a different compilation of the board <laughs> that uh, gets to make that decision. So that, that would be my uh, motion, just that one part so we could keep moving um, with the design, not the conditional approval of removing parking spaces. That's to TBA, which I'm certainly, if I, it comes before us, when I'm on the board, um, I already have the knowledge of where you're coming from that. And then I just have uh, one question, and, and maybe I just zoned out or I'm not um, interpreting the materials submitted to me. 
It was on um, the traffic calming. It's, I don't know if it's PowerPoint slide seven, page seven, um, under safety scope and benefits, traffic calming Lafayette Street to Boulevard Road. What the board has is um, a picture of Boulevard Road at the stop sign where Boulevard meets Lafayette. And then there's um, two imposed, sort of one's thicker than the other, white lines. Uh, I'm assuming that that's indicating some sort of traffic calming, or, and if it is, what is that? I'll stop. Sure, there. sure, absolutely. And it, it may be clear from, uh, from a plan view, actually, in this case, but I think if you can, you know, look at the, the layout of, of Boulevard and Lafayette, um, it's, a, it's a fairly sort of greater than 90 degree angle, which, which often in, in the context of geometric street design um, can lead to higher speeds. So the thought here when we were, we were looking at this project and it, and it actually sort of came about a little bit after the fact, just looking at circulation was, this is a fairly low cost treatment to sort of um, make a little bit more of a right angle here. This would be just applying um, a new stop bar, a very short segment of a uh, dividing line. And then these would likely be, uh, we envision as, as flex posts or other hardened, but not like concrete type type materials to, uh, to just sort of uh, slow down traffic and formalize this intersection a little bit more rather than, excuse me, um, having this higher speed approach. So this was, this was a traffic calming measure that, that actually wasn't in the original uh, concept application submitted back in uh, February of, of 2022, but something that we, we identified with, with Kelly and um, actually John's predecessor early on in this project as a, as a potential very low cost add-on that could, that could improve some safety at that minor intersection. No, no, and that, that's well needed. And um, what I'm thinking of is the notorious cutthroat, especially in the peak hours in the morning when everyone's using the DCR Greenway pathway as well as walking to school, as well as going to Magnolia Thorndike Park. Um, just looking at the picture that you've provided us, I've always wondered, and I don't know if it's included and my visual perception is off or if it's beyond what this project can cover, but if I was going eastbound on Herbert Road, um, you know, basically I'm thinking of the traffic that Waze has shown them a way to um, take a, a right on Brooks, then a left on uh, Chandler or one of those other feeder roads to get onto Herbert. Um, the town has done some uh, steps to try to slow down that traffic on Herbert, but when they come to Herbert and to take a left to shoot up to Boulevard because of the uh, topography of the road, which I see these improvements here, um, which is to try to calm the traffic and, you know, define that road a little bit more. But I think what it is is where they really chug up to speed is as soon as they take that left off of Herbert to go on to Boulevard, um, and they could also go on to Lafayette. Is the darker white line that abuts the DCR property, um, I, I see where it goes all the way down to the end. Is that going all the way down to that intersection that I cited, which is if you were on Herbert going west and you wanted to take a left on Boulevard? Because I'm trying to slow down when they whip around that corner or is it no, it's a few houses up and it's not that close to that particular intersection? I will, I will apologize for my, my limited artistic uh, <laughs> ability here. This was, this was just kind of showing the, the right sizing, more 90 degree nature of this intersection. I think it's, it's more accurately, you know, conceptually engineered here. So this would be, um, you know, and I, I see that it sort of tapers off right at right at the path entrance here, but it, it would just be a couple of houses to really kind of formalize this. It would not be extending all the way back to, to Herbert. And, and, and really this, that's kind of like a, you know, additional safety frosting on this cake, if you will. The real <laughs> scope and concept of, of the initial grant application was, was really in, in this area, but we felt like um, due to the 
proposed term preclusion here and some of the other safety improvements that thinking about this, that thinking about Lafayette Boulevard and Mass Ave as a little bit of kind of a system, if you will, was fair to the safety of this project. So that's how this additional small component was added. So apologies if that wasn't clear on how far that extended back. No, and I just want to say it's very appreciated because you could technically say we're Mass Ave, that's it, we're out of here. But you did extend into Lafayette and Boulevard, and I do appreciate that. So what I would ask that the town manager and or the transportation planner, Mr. Alessi, after these, the design plan is implemented and these improvements are put in, if when appropriate, and I don't think it needs to go through TAC because we're trying to limit everything we send to them, if they, if we could go out and evaluate that particular intersection, Herbert going left onto Boulevard, which also you could go left onto Lafayette, but precluding the left-hand turn off of Lafayette to go westbound, I think will, I know will stifle a lot of people who take that as a cut through, but the real big is the traffic being able to queue and really speed up there. So these improvements, which I do appreciate, you're extending really beyond what you had to do, and I'm very grateful and appreciative, but if that doesn't 100% solve that speedway sort of ability mindset that after this goes in six months, 12 months, whatever is the appropriate interval time from a planning perspective, that if those, that's still a problem, it's going to have to be the town's responsibility to look at that and come up with something to sort of adjunct what this is. So I appreciate and thank you, Mr. Chair, for letting me be a little long-winded there. I made my motion regarding the design and I'll stop there. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Mahan. So I'll make, I had some questions and I'll come back to Mr. Hurd and anybody else who wants to do that. So I wonder if, Mr. Lessie, if you could elaborate still a little bit more on your requested second motion, which is not currently on the table, but you said, if I, my notes say conditional removal of those, future removal of those parking spaces upon further development. Do you mean further development to that business, like if that different business goes in or what, can you clarify what you mean by that? So it's my understanding from Kelly Leidema, the former assistant planning director, that there was interest in redeveloping the entire parcel adjacent to those parking spots, not just the, not just the physical therapy center, but the entire block right there. So the idea was to let's not impact the current businesses right now, but when it is redeveloped where there's no plans right now set in stone, but when it gets to that point, when it's happening, that there would be the, you know, approval already made that when it's being redeveloped, that the parking spaces can be removed in order to make it a 24 seven bus stop. Okay. That's, that's helpful. One thing that occurs to me is that we might want some specificity about what we mean by redevelopment. Like, is it any redevelopment? Is it a certain, you know, threshold? What we had in mind was not just a business turning over, but just the entire parcel turning into a different type of development. Perhaps it's a multi-use development with residential housing on top. I'm not, I didn't think of the specifics of that, but the thought here was that when the parcel gets redeveloped, we would be able to remove the parking spaces so that there isn't the expectation that the parking spaces exist. Yeah. That's kind of what I was thinking that this might be getting at is that it's a way for us to influence future development. If it's known as a given that the priority for us is the best priority, so to speak, and that that would influence future development that, you know, in a direction that I think would be transit oriented, which is in alignment with our, our, our goals. And, you know, I think I'd be, I would be favorable to that. It also occurs to me, of course, that we could take that vote at another time. You know, whether when such development looms and, you know, we might lose the, the effect of sort of the shaping effect of that, I think on, on developer planning. So I would consider putting that amendment on it. I'd like to hear from my colleagues to see if there'd be enough support before I go to that 
that trouble. Uh, I think Mr. Herta is hand up, and we'll go to Mr. Herta. Yes. Yeah. I did. It occurred to me. Sometimes you think about the things you say after you say them. I just want to say, Mr. Lessey, my comments about the uh, the notice. This is long before you were the <laughs> transportation planner, so that was not directed at you. I think that's just for future. If we could get some more lead time, that that would help. Um, for similar to my comments and what Mr. Diggins said regarding peak time, I don't. As I sit here, I'm not inclined to support a motion or amendment to commit to take, take taking out those spaces. Again, we could, in in an earlier time, in a later date, hear arguments as to why that's important. But taking those two parking spaces, I mean, I'm not aware that this can just be a residential development there. So if it would have to be a mixed-use development. Not having those two parking spaces could, you know, be a significant factor in whether or not a developer wants to move forward with the plan if they're going to build businesses that don't have parking in front. And again, at that time, I would be open to hear arguments and you know, rationale for why it's important to take that those two spaces out. But that particular part of Mass Ave, again, in the morning. This queuing. That's why why we committed to the bu the bus lane there. I'm not convinced at this time that this significant queuing 24/7 that would justify taking the parking spaces out. So as I say here today, and again, I don't want to put vote on a hypothetical, and that's just where I am. Mr. Diggins, did you have your Well, I, I can answer that, and I have a few other things to say. If you would like to, because you haven't gone, if you'd like to say or ask more questions, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm fine with waiting. No, I'm, I'm good. Thank okay, you. sure, sure. Thank you. Yeah. So, sure, no problem. So, um, so it, I mean, for me, the, the long-term goal is to get it such that people don't want to park. You know? And so it can happen a couple of ways. One is that we do developments where... I mean, there's no need for parking. You know, it could be, you know, it may influence the kind of businesses that go in there. You know, and so it may attract a certain kind of developer. You know, but I like for transit, you know, to be so good, be that people want to do it first. I mean, and, and and therefore, for me, it's like, you know what? I mean, we have your parking. You know, and our, like I said, let's move, move things towards not needing to have the parking. But if we can at least get cars. Moving cars out of those lanes, you know, then I think that will help transit, you know, overall too. So, so I'm fine. You know, however, we we'll go on this, I think, I think, I think we'll be fine too, you know. Uh, uh, so, so that's my take on the the parking. You know, the the more lead time, you know, I think what often will help with us is when there's something biggish, you know, uh, to have a conversation with each of us. Individually about it, I, mean, I know it takes more time to do that, but it gives each of us, you know, more time. I mean, first off, I mean, before you present to us, have that conversation with us. You'll give us a presentation, give us a chance to have questions, and then we can just monopolize your time without me you dragging things out a whole lot in the context of the meeting. So I'll suggest that. I mean, and in terms of um, even longer lead time, I guess the question is, when do we? find out that something like this is in the works, you know, uh, so is it when there's an application going in um, for it, you know, I mean, do we want to influence I me mean, what is being applied for? I mean, I just put that out there because it's like, I, mean, I like more lead time, but at the same time, I mean, I mean, I can understand that staff might say, well, first off, we don't have enough time, and secondly, I mean, you know, you're asking questions when you don't really see, you know, the big picture, I mean, so are your questions going to be good? But I would say if the application is really well developed, we might have I mean, some input that would be useful at that point in time. So this is just something else to take, take into account with respect to when we get involved in the process, because I wouldn't normally say that for everything involving planning. But when it comes to roadways where we actually have to do the approval, then it may be in everyone's best interest to get us involved earlier um, rather than later. And the last question is what is really the – the, um, the maintenance, I mean, um, that we would be doing the MOU on. I mean, I mean is it I mean, that we are going to be taking charge of the painting or, 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 or what? So do we have a sense of what that MOU is going to involve? So through you, Mr. Chair, is the question to 
I guess. That, was, that one was not rhetorical. No, no, yeah. <laughs> All right, so we had a question. Uh, would either of our guests uh, like to uh, address that? I, I can start with that. I mean, I think for this project, the, the typical maintenance elements, just, just sort of listing them from left to right on the, on the page, right near the boulevard at Lafayette intersection, you, you might have, you know, flex posts or some other materials like that, a, a quasi-permanent, quasi-temporary type material for that traffic calming. You would have the rapid flashing beacon, uh, which, you know, is a traffic control device. You would have the high friction red paint, and then you would have a few other, um, you know, associated signage elements. And, and typically when we've done these projects, we just kind of have like a very, depending on the scale of the project, like a little matrix or term sheet where each party, um, you know, agrees to, to maintain what. So, you know, that, uh, that high friction red surface uh, treatment, you know, does last for several years before it's worn down enough to be replaced. The flashing beacon really shouldn't need to be affected for, for a while, you know, depending on the flex post type material, that, that may vary. Um, and then obviously the sign should last a long time. So that's, those are, those are the items and we typically work with, with each municipality identifying who is responsible for what. Thank you. Appreciate it. So, Thank you. Um, I, I thought it was conclude my, my own remarks by first of all expressing appreciation. I also wanted to be clear that if I if I'm recall, if I don't if I'm not misremembering, I may have given my blessing to our town staff's participation by remote tonight um, as as the chair. So um, I appreciate that feedback on, from my colleague. But I, I want to be clear that uh, I want to take take the bullet for that one. Um, uh, secondly, I, I really appreciate the consideration of adding the traffic calming. We hear a lot from residents about intersections that, that have safety con concerns, so I'm very glad to see a low-cost and thoughtful approach. Uh, my only suggestion would be buy some extra flex posts because we know what happens to them once the motorists start getting used to them and uh, maybe don't always make a clean cut <laughs> at turn. Um, just as for expedience, although it may be slightly irregular, I'm going to second Mrs. Mahan's motion because somebody needs to, <laughs> um, even though the chair doesn't usually, but why not? Uh, is there further discussion from my, uh, or questions from my colleagues? No. So did, did, you didn't make I did amendment. not. I'll be happy to second it. I thought it had seconded. I thought Mr. Hurt I thought I seconded. Yeah. I, I, oh I'm yeah. Not oh, I'll give you. I'll give credit words too. Then I, let's give this one to, to, to uh, Mr. Diggins. How's that? <laughs> Somebody will roll back the tape. Somebody <laughs> will. Yeah. I don't know what he's talking about. Roll he said he tape. seconded it. We're going to. We're going to. It'll be an exercise in memory examination. All right. I probably talked so second. much that I talked Mr. Helmut's memory of someone seconding my motion. I apologize. <laughs> The memory erasure effect. All right. Are we good? Excuse me. Yes. Okay. So we have a motion to approve the design by Mrs. Mahan, seconded by various members, including Mr. Dickens. <laughs> That's true. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Moving on to um, – let me just check with my, my colleagues. We have a lot of people here. Does anyone need a, a recess before we finish that? We good? Okay. Um, thank you for, uh, for joining us uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Town Manager for this important agenda item. Um, and just, just to be clear, the Town Manager had a board sanctioned uh, leave before this, so he's not slacking. Um, but he did uh, very generously come return uh, for, for this discussion uh, for the uh, operating override. So um, I want to point out some materials in front of the board. So we have the draft override commitments that uh, the Long Range Planning Committee and uh, its board representatives, uh, myself and Mr. DeCourcy, who is not present with us tonight but was involved in this document, and also the town manager, um, in consultation with the superintendent, and, and I have consulted with the school committee, um, a few uh, sub-quorum of the uh, school committee members as well. So a lot of eyes have been on these documents. Uh, there is, just to point out to my colleagues, a couple of very small and, and non-substantive uh, wording changes uh, since the version that, that – was posted on uh, on the weekend, but this was updated this morning. Um, and I will suggest that as the board contemplates this, um, that if the board does decide to move uh, to put an override before the voters, that we do what we have done in other years, which is include these override commitments in that motion, um, so that we, uh, as a board, are making those public commitments you know, to the residents of the town for how we will 
spend the additional revenue if the voters agree to grant it. Um, from that point uh, on, though, I think I will um, s start by giving the town manager an opportunity to just frame this. And then we've had several discussions uh, for this, but I think summary for both the board members and also the public about, uh, about your recommendation and that of the Long Range Planning Committee uh, would be in order. Mr. Pooler. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so uh, first I want to make clear I am reporting on uh, conversations from the Long Range Planning Committee. Um, and uh, I think there was a very thorough discussion about uh, the needs for the school department and for the town uh, for uh, extra revenue. Uh, there was a lot of discussion about how big an override we should have, uh, the, what the impact would be to uh, taxpayers. Um, a proposal for a $7 million override to be voted on this fall and I would suggest that the right date for that would be Tuesday, November 7th, uh, would allow us to go forward uh, three years without having to go back to the voters for another override. Um, that may change. It may extend out further if we get additional state aid or, or additional um, new growth. But I think given some realistic assumptions about where I see both those areas going over the uh, next few years, I think that we can say for sure that we don't want one for another three years. Um, we would continue to constrain our spending on uh, the school side at 3.5% uh, per year for general education costs and 3.25% for the town side for our uh, operating costs and an increase per year of 6.5% for SPED costs, which is frankly lower than it has been uh, in previous years. It used to be 7%. So in some discussions with uh, the school committee representatives at the Long Range Planning Committee, uh, we came to that. We would continue. Just, I'm sorry. So I, I just want, did you just say that I should, we should change 6.5 to 7? No, no, it, it is changing from 7 down oh, to 6.5. I'm sorry. I, I'm I sorry if I wasn't clear. I, no. But thank you for thank asking. You. No, I just want to make sure. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mahoney. Please continue, sir. We would continue to adjust the school budget up or down uh, at a rate of 50% uh, of the uh, most recent per student pupil expenditures that are reported to us by DESE, by the state. Um, we have uh, been doing that consistently, um, and uh, I think that makes sense for us to continue to do that going forward. And again, that represents the consensus from the Long Range Planning Committee. Um, the school committee has a strategic plan that they've outlined at the um, Finance Committee uh, just recently, uh, and on their, uh, through their own website and so forth. Uh, which would include adding to the school budget on a permanent basis in FY24, a million dollars, in FY25, $3.1 million, in FY26, $1.7 million, and in FY27, uh, 600000 and in FY28, 300000 um, I would just note that the million dollar increase in FY24 would be a permanent one and would replace what is in the current uh, long-range plan and as was voted um, by town meeting of a $600,000 one-time increase and in FY25 uh, the increase of uh, 3.1 would supplant a one-time increase of $300,000 just in case anybody had questions about the money that was previously been voted. Um, the, I'm not here tonight to speak about all the school committee strategic plans. Um, I know that they will do that on their own, and they've been doing that. Um, but these are the dollar figures that are represented by that. On the town side, um, I think that we need to continue to make a commitment to increasing work on our roads and sidewalks, as we've done in the last two overrides, where we expanded our spending on capital that way. I, would, uh, I think we do need to spend another $200,000 there. Um, I set aside, I recommended $250,000 generally to go to uh, the Public Works Department 
both to allow them initially to transition toward more organic uh, fields at our grass fields in town, uh, following the lead of what uh, other communities uh, such as Springfield has done, uh, where they, it's interesting, they have a combination of some turf fields, but they also have taken all their uh, grass fields and converted them to organic, uh, organic fields. What that really means is the type of fertilizer we'll use would be organic. Right now they're chemical uh, fertilizers. Um, we do use integrated pest management on our fields, so we don't use uh, chemical poisons and so forth, um, but to make them fully organic. Um, some of that would be for some initial transition to that, and then ultimately I think we need to make sure that we've boosted the Public Works Department enough as we look at possible changes for new trash contracts in the next couple of years as our current contracts run out uh, and the possibility that those will go up. Finally, um, we've put a lot of money into OPEB. Arlington has done a very good job of doing that. Uh, we have about $20 million in there now. Uh, and then town meeting recently voted to add another 1.4 million, which will then in the future take away the town's ability to uh, take from the fund that that 1.4 million came from, an annual $300,000 appropriation into the OPEB fund. So instead, I would recommend that the, um, the override cover an increase or an additional $150,000 going into the OPEB fund. Um, I would just, the one caveat I would say to this is that um, as I was going to announce during announcements, um, we have a settlement of our contract with our patrol union. They have ratified that um, overwhelmingly. We are now looking at the um, final cost of that and how much of that we can pay out of the current year budget and how much we're going to have to take out of um, the salary reserve. If for some reason it seems that we need to cover that contract and or the, um, the ranking officer's contract, um, we will know that I think later in the summer and I would expect that uh, Jim Feeney when he becomes manager may make a recommendation to you about having to make some tweaks to the recommendations mm -hmm. I have here about town spending. It's, it's just too early to know that mm -hmm. until we've settled that, that second contract with the ranking officers. The other thing I just mentioned, uh, as we go to the voters uh, to ask them to support the override at the same time, uh, we need to uh, ask them to support the municipal circuit breaker that was passed by town meeting and uh, passed by the legislature uh, that would allow uh, there be a, a limit uh, to uh, the amount of taxes that uh, certain seniors and low-income people, low-income seniors will be paying. Um, it's similar to the state circuit breaker. Um, we have gotten permission from the legislature to do that. We held off implementing it because there was some thought that the legislature might enact a change to the state circuit breaker. <coughs> that is not happening, so it is the time now for the town to move forward in that direction. We will continue to pursue new revenue sources. Um, and, uh, you know, there continues to be talks at the state level of giving cities and towns some options. Again, those aren't on the table as actual things yet, but we will continue to look at that. Um, and uh, we'll continue to develop our bonding st structures in the sale of bonds for the high school, uh, which is a debt excluded cost to minimize the any single year increases to uh, our residents. We've frankly done well with that by borrowing more than we needed to two years ago at low interest rates and not borrowing anything this year at high interest rates. Um, and so we hope to keep that pattern going. Um, and um, we will continue to maintain our reserves so that we always have at least uh, reserves of 5% of our revenue or better going forward, uh, which has been important for our bond rating. Um, so I think this is the time to put this forward so that the public is aware that a vote will be coming up so that the people who are interested in campaigning around this issue will have enough time. Um, and um, so at this time, that is the recommendation from the Long Range Planning Committee. And I'd be happy to answer any questions members have.
Thank you, Mr. Pooler. Um, I do want to offer a, cor a correction and, and an apology. Um, this was a, a very, uh, the commitments document was a moving target and uh, the town manager was traveling and I was, uh, had, had particularly intense past day or two. Um, so one change that, um, that Mr. DeCourcy and I uh, discussed um, that I have reflected in this edit and I had just completely slipped my mind was uh, our feeling, and I want to suggest to the board, that we actually omit the commitment for the organic field. Um, not, we think that that's actually really worth doing, but that uh, we want to suggest to the board, and I'm happy to put that language back in if, if my colleagues wish, but you know, these are the board's commitments to the, to the voters. Uh, the thinking simply being that overrides traditionally have been um, aimed at essential and core services uh, or, or um, compensation to our employees. So wanting to kind of constrain that, uh, we're suggesting that we constrain uh, that to and, and use the, you know, the, since it's a small amount of money anyway and we suspect that the new trash contract will, will easily uh, consume 250000 or more. Um, so that was our thinking, but I, I respect my, and I apologize to the town manager for springing that on you. That was, uh, that was a function of the days we've, had, we've both had. Um, but, um, but ultimately it is a board decision for that. So that's just, that's just before you. If you want to add that back in, please do that in your motion or your, or your discussions. Um, and I'm just going to just lead off this time. Um, this is a really it's sober and important discussion. And you know, I take very seriously the obligation of the select board to recommend to the public when and how much to do an override. The reality is that an override is needed every few years because of the structural deficit. And the structural deficit is that we, the town, are only allowed to raise tax revenues by 2.5% a year plus a, a marginal amount for new growth and that our costs for providing just the same amount of services are significantly grow at a significantly higher rate than 2.5% plus new growth. That structural deficit means that every few years the town needs to ask voters to raise the base tax rate to a certain level higher in order to just keep providing the same services. And at the same time, Arlington has a history of looking for opportunities to make investments. And I think that uh, the school committee has made a very good case for a, a very pressing need to make some investments that do suggest increased spending in order to uh, ensure the greatest possible quality education for our students. I think one of the things that, I mean, there's a lot in the school strategic plan and I encourage people to read the plan and to speak to the school committee about it, um, but that the, uh, the compensation rates for teachers need to be more competitive uh, among, among many other needs. And I think that just from the interest of our community and for our students, Although there are risks to asking residents to raise, uh, to voluntarily raise our own taxes, uh, there are also risks in failing to make these critical investments for our, particularly for our students. And uh, I share the concern that Mr. Foskett and others, whose opinion I deeply respect, I share the the um, the concern of the long-term picture that you know this that overrides. Uh, that add new spending are not necessarily sustainable in the future. We are looking at potentially large deficits down the road. I am comfortable, though, that the board's political responsibility and political leadership is to say to voters, we think this investment is worth making. Do you want to pay for it? And, uh, and so the board's uh, obligation, I think, is to make, give the community the best advice that we can and, and then let the voters decide. So I am comfortable supporting the outlines of, of, the, of the plan and the draft motion. Um, and then for that, I will uh, yield to my colleagues for their comments. Oh, Mr. Heim, you have a, uh, Attorney Heim? If I could, I don't want to speak. Yes, please, no, please. I don't when, want to speak you, when you raise your hand, it's always, always worth listening to, sir. I don't want to speak in advance of the board, but I just want to highlight something uh, that the board knows well, but it's for the public's information before you begin further discussion and mm -hmm. deliberation. Yep. There's really three different votes that the board takes. First is a vote to place an override on the ballot and to call a special election for that purpose in this case. And only the board may do that. The second is, to, is a very um, 
straightforward question. The board is not afforded a lot of discretion in how they frame an override question. So if a member of the board makes a motion to place an override question, the override question may not include these commitments that you're going to discuss. Right. And then the third board vote that this board has traditionally taken is about these commitments, which is what the board sort of pledges to do in its capacity in consultation with the school committee, the school department, and the town manager. So I just wanted to make that clear before you guys got into your So that would be a third. If we chose to make the commitments, that would be a third vote? Correct. Right. Attorney. Right. Thank you for the clarification, Attorney. And once again, saving us from ourselves. Um, Question? Yeah. Mr. Diggins. And then I'll, I'll defer to my colleagues for, to, for discussion. Yeah. So uh, any sense of how this vote falls vis-a-vis -vis, uh, special town meeting? I, I will speak for myself. There's, I've had some discussions with that. Long Range Planning touched upon this, and I think I've had some other discussions privately. Um, right now, the, the urgent question for the, for the timing is to set the override. So I think that we will then um, need to work from that when we look at the date of the special town meeting. Most of the people I have personally talked to feel like we need to allow some space uh, for, for the town to focus its attention on uh, the peak of its attention on these two things. So my personal view would be that we'd be looking at a special town meeting in mid-October. I'd welcome the town manager's view on that because I know you're talking with your staff about about the readiness uh, aspects of that, of the zoning and, and the redevelopment board's work. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Chair. Yes, I think that would be fine. I think having a vote then and uh, that vote would be to uh, include adjusting some of the budgets and making those adjustments contingent upon a successful override. When I heard that, it was like, oh, then, then it comes. Okay, I got it. All right, thank you. Uh, Mr. Hurd. I'll just say, first off, Attorney Heim, we assume every voter in Arlington watches our meetings, so they'll know these commitments. We don't have to put them on in the question. Um, regarding the turf fields, I was a little confused as to why we we're talking about that in an override commitment document, so I'm fine not having that in the override commitments. Um, one thing, I think this comes up every time that we put this document together, and whether or not this language has too much bearing or not, I think we should add a section 4D, and I think I'm stepping on Mrs. Mahan who would say this, that just says department heads and town staff will review budgets on an annual basis and try to determine where any spending cuts can be made. So, to, so the residents know that we are instructing town staff as part of this looking at an ominous deficit on the back end of this commitment cycle to know that, the, that we're trying to trim the fat where possible. And that's not in staffing, it's not in critical areas, but it is, it would be helpful for our residents to know that our town department heads are continually trying to find areas where they can trim down their budgets without impacting the services that get provided. And I think that adding that to that section is helpful. Um, Nobody likes overrides. <laughs> Nobody wants to spend more money. I think, you know, we are in a, as the chair explained, with our limited limited opportunities for new growth. And now that we don't have the committee on, on new growth, I mean, we talk about new growth all the time. And it's just never going to be a silver bullet that comes in and solves all of our problems just because of the limited areas that we, we can do it even with zoning changes and increased density in the zoning, that's good, but it's not going to solve our problems. There will eventually become a time when we can't sustain an override every four years because it, it will just be unaffordable for anyone to live here. But I am convinced that right now, at this time, the work and the recommendations of the Long Range Planning Committee are appropriate for Arlington. Um, in, we need to pay all of our all of our employees more to make them synonymous with other towns to prevent transfers. And the school department is definitely 
our teacher salaries are, are right in that argument. Um, we, my, I always talk about my kids on this here, but my son Wesley had an amazing second grade teacher at the Dallin School, and when Dylan came up to second grade, we we're like, "Oh, great!" And I'm not going to say her by name, but we found out a couple months before that she was moving on, and it was just like, "Oh." And it's story after story of teachers that are transferring out of the Arlington system. And it, it's just like with the officers that we're dealing with, where there's eight officers that are trying to transfer it to other jurisdictions, is that we're just, if you, you can make $20,000 more somewhere else, what are you going to do? They all love their classrooms, they love their students, they love their schools, but eventually money talks. So, I mean, I, I do think that the commitment to the schools and to try to, you know, incentivize teachers and really important staff to stay in the school department is important. And again, stink staff to pay for it, but <laughs> that's just, I mean, we all, we've always said we get a lot of bang for our buck in this town. And even with what we're paying with the override, we still get a lot of bang for our buck if you look at the budgets and services provided in neighboring towns. But with, and we have stuck to the schedule that we provided in our last set of commitments. We are on track. Um, unfortunately, these these projections are pretty concrete. Where we know after the four years that we're requesting that we're going to need another override. It's just going to be a matter of what that looks like. So we can pray and hope for the best of for some good financial news from whether it be the state or some increased revenue sources in the interim, but we will be here again in, or some of us will be here in four years having this discussion again. Um, but like I said, for right now, I think that this is the appropriate course of action and I'll support what's being put in front of us. Mrs. Mahan. <clears throat> um, if I could, uh, first, I'd like to make the three separate motions and Please. then hopefully for me be brief. Um, and uh, Attorney Iam has provided the wording as well as the order uh, recommended. So the first motion would be that the town shall hold a special election on Tuesday, November 7th, 2023, 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. for the purposes of voting on a Proposition 2.5 override question to be approved by the Select Board. And that timely written notice of such election shall be directed to the town clerk in compliance with general laws cha uh, 54 section chapter 54 section 42 C should I just make all three of them and then sure. someone second all three and then the second will be uh, to place uh, as a special election ballot question on November 7 2023 Proposition two and a half override. Shall the town of Arlington be allowed to assess an additional seven million dollars in real estate and personal property taxes for the purposes of funding the operating budgets of the town and the public schools for the fiscal year beginning July first, twenty twenty four? Yes, no. And then my third motion would be to uh, receive and approve the fiscal 24 override commitments for the November 7, 2023 override vote uh, with the uh, amendment that uh, Mr. Hurd stated as well as the chair with the amendment of um, not including specific language regarding turf or organic fields. So those would be my three motions. Um, I couldn't make any more stronger statements uh, about the need for retention for our teachers and our professional and paraprofessional staff, uh, including special education. Um, it, that's sort of one of the core fabrics of this town. Um, and I even hear from people who don't have any more or uh, have made a choice that won't have um, children in the schools but that's one of the things that they always say to me is what attracts, either attracted them to Arlington 
and or uh, kept them here uh, because of the town's commitment to that. Um, and I think when I looked at teachers' comparable salary, um, they're in the, when you look at the comparable communities that are compared against, they're like in the low 50%. Sometimes if you look at some other communities, they're up to about 62%. And, um, you know, some may say, well, you know, this is your location, this is what you want to do, you know, this is how you want to serve, and I agree with that. Um, but you also have to, in order to be the best professional, whether you're a teacher, police, fire, public works employee, you also have to be able to maintain your family and uh, have a roof over their heads and pay your bills and, and, and feed um, your own. So um, this is something that, that is definitely needed. I have had conversations when this first came up three years ago, previously when I was on uh, long-range planning, because I do feel just as strongly um, for our town employees that that also is a, a standard uh, that we also need to reach with public works, fire, and police, and I am I, you know, had a conversation. I told the town manager I didn't want to congratulate and get, ex you know, really excited too soon until it was ratified, and it, and it was ratified, I believe, it was 31 to 5. I'll find out who the five were. No, I'm only <laughs> kidding. I'm only kidding. Um, which brings all of our, uh, subject to uh, the vote at special town meeting, our union contracts up to, I believe, FY24. Um, so the process will be beginning again. So. I know a higher override number was discussed, but um, years stepped away from it. And I am a bit remiss that I really don't see anything in there. I mean, I haven't had coffee with uh, the Public Works Director, Mr. Rademacher, yet, because I want to meet with him, because sometimes I've learned in my earnest to advocate for something and be a proponent of it. Sometimes something I mean to do good might not have that uh, desired result. Plus, I also want to get, I've been putting out um, the figures of just two departments that have seven openings and nine openings, which I know we filled two of them, um, I believe, in parks. And we're looking at, I had a conversation with the human resources director, sort of kind of retooling. Um, but the, the same with the issue we have with retaining our teacher staff, we're having that with police, fire, and public works. I mean, they're still not, if you do the Arlington 12, the, you know, Tuxedo Junction 8, whatever, <laughs> um, they're at the bottom end. And, and when I see that someone can go to Melrose or, or Reading, which isn't comparable, um, and, or Stoneham, <coughs> I think they have 20-something thousand residents, um, from the town side, I mean, I. The, our colleagues on the school committee are doing a superb job for advocating for teachers, professionals, and paraprofessionals to get comparative pay, um, and I'd rather be on the higher end than the low. I have that same concern um, for police, fire, and public works, and they're kind of in a different situation because a lot of their pay, the base pay, is so woefully low and inadequate. The only way they can, and, and through the contracts, where um, additional hours, overtime, whether it's public works or police, um, then they can work 38, 40 hours a week, and then work anywhere from 28 to 32 more hours that week. Whereas if they look at another city or town, they know they can go there, put their 40 hours in, and maybe only have to do 12, 15 hours and not miss all the family events. But more importantly, what I'm concerned about is if the staff on the town side says, I'm going to stay in there and, and st work for the town of Arlington and I'm going to put in a ridiculous amount of overtime hours, I'm concerned about their safety and the residents of the town's safety. You know, they're working 40 hours a week and then they realize I got to work 20 to 30 more hours a week, not just miss family events, but to, to 
um, have a, a pay stub that breaks even. So I know that's a conversation that the current town manager and then um, Mr. Feeney will have to pick up and figure out. Um, and I do anticipate that we will. So I, I'm a little like, I don't see anything really in here for town employees, but I do understand that, you know, this has been something that's been discussed for the better part of almost three years. And I know it was a higher number and um, everybody on the town and school side looked at that for as much as that they could trim it down um, to go to the voters with pain, but hopefully the least amount of pain. Um, so it wasn't like we just came out with this number. I heard a much higher number. I think it started in the double digits, which was really scary. So I, I do appreciate that. And I just would ask um, that uh, regarding for A, <clears throat> this is probably something that's already in the works, but that where we do have um, the new civic engagement, not officer, I can't, I don't know if there's an officer, Ms. Marzilli, um, if that's something um, on 4A that we can, I know she's doing a lot with uh, getting out to constituencies that don't come to the town and it's information in the natural course of business or the natural way. Um, and I know that uh, there was something else besides MBTA communities. If uh, we could add <clears throat> the spirit of 4A into, um, when she, you know, not asking you to necessarily create more to her job, but when she's going out and doing the civic engagement for MBTA communities, and I'm blanking on the second one, um, that add this on to it. To, to really get that inf information out there. And then um, I had something else sort of uh, following in what Mr. Hurd said about positions and examining and evaluating. But it, I'll, I'll do it under new business because it's an opera thing, which has nothing to do with this. And I don't want to confuse the two issues. But um, I know myself and all my colleagues, uh, we're, we're sort of uh, veterans of, of overrides and debt exclusions, and we know that the work that's needed, you know, from our colleagues on the school committee, but definitely here also on the town side. Um, and I don't know that we necessarily need a vote for this, um, and but I think it's something that will be on a future agenda where um, traditionally there's been sort of a trinity, a triad of debt exclusion and or overrides um, with the representative from Finance Committee, School Committee, and the Select Board. I'm looking you, at you, Mr. Chair. Um, but, but I think at some meeting in the future, we do need to at least codify that from, from the Select Board's position, but we, that's not something that we have to do right, here tonight. Right. So I stand by those, not stand by, I have those three motions on the table. I'll wait for a second and I'll end it there. Thank you very much, and I would just want to say I really appreciate you expanding uh, very properly the, the mention of not only teacher salaries, but the paraprofessionals and all the other personnel who, who serve such an important role in our students' education, so thank you for that. Mr. Diggins, do you have any comments? You not only get one second, you get three, you know, because for, for your three motions, so second, <laughs> second. That's all right. You know, uh, so, so for those of you who have been around, you know, I have a question. So have we had a vote on uh, the first Tuesday of November? In November? We, I want to say We yes. have frequently right. done overrides on Tuesdays. Yeah, but in November. Oh, oh, you mean for an override? Normally overrides have been in, in June, but mm -hmm. I think for timing issues this year. So probably not because they've historically mm -hmm. been in June. Yeah, I was just wondering because we, 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 we had a survey question, you know, on the last Division Arlington survey about the, whether the people like to vote you know, in town elections you know, on, on, on the first Tuesday. In November, and, and it had a pretty positive, you know, mm -hmm. result. I mean, people kind of like that idea. This will be a, a town election. I mean, not not for us like or anything, but it will be, you know, for that first Tuesday. So it'll be interesting to see. I mean, what Indeed. kind of now? Interestingly, I mean, because it's an odd year. I mean, it's not going to correlate with any kind of state election. I mean, and so so it's kind of going to be on its own I mean, in that respect. But people will be in that kind of like. November election. I think that was the idea, Mr. Yeah. Higgins. All right. Well, you're, you're all geniuses on that long-range planning committee. You know, so, uh, uh, 
Yeah, that's why I'm no longer on it. <laughs> so, so, it is, so, uh, so, um, so he, I, as Mr. Mahat, Mr. Mahat said to me, there was contemplation of a uh, larger number being uh, and, and a longer span between uh, the overrides. And I know when I was on it, you know, I was a component of a smaller you know, number and a more frequent you know, override. Because I think we should just reframe me, the notion overrides is instead of like it's painful, it's awful, me, we don't want to do it. It's like it's like it's an opportunity me for us to determine what it is that we want and how we want to invest in the town. You know, I'm judging this me, and 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 think of it as a positive thing because because it's like me, we benefit me when each of us toss in a sum of money and we combine it and we do things. It's much less expensive if we do it as a group. I mean, then if we try to do it individually, you know, and so, so, and I think if we do it more frequently, I mean, um, first off, mathematically, if it's smaller and more frequent, it's less money, you know, than if we do a larger one and less frequent. And of course, it depends on the numbers, I mean, that will determine that. If you just do a simple little equation on your own, if you, you know, did like one 20% override, you know, four years versus five for five percent overrides, I mean, it's just mathematically a smaller number. I mean, so I would like to see us also take because it is an opportunity for us to talk about our values. We you know, we commit to doing that. We don't have to like put it in a commitment thing. I mean, but but every year, I think we should have conversations I mean, with residents. I mean, what is it that you want? You know, I mean, because you know, we I mean, we are a community, we're a species I mean, that wants to grow. You know, we're not satisfied with status quo. I mean, and, and so, so it's like, what more do we want? How much is it going to cost? How do we prioritize it? And that's the way I think of getting with my, Mr. Foskett's I mean, suggesting that we be transparent about things. I'm not suggesting that we do a <laughs> menu. If we were to do a menu, though, I would say it would include a certain number of base things, you know, which would be more than just the status quo. It would be like the status quo plus the money for the teachers. And then maybe a selection of things. I mean, is it organic fields? I mean, is it charging stations? Whatever. So it would be a menu with I mean, a certain small discretionary items. But I think we could have that kind of transparency if we have a conversation, a frequent conversation with residents about what it is I mean, that they want. I mean, and say, look, every three years, whatever, I mean, we're going to do the override. It's just going to be a matter of how much because it's really going to be a function of what it is uh, uh, that you want. And, and, and so for those of you who have your um, your cards out, it's now, I'm just going to say new growth. You know, <laughs> so because so, I mean, that is a way you know, to try to uh, decrease the impact you know, or decrease the amount of, of the overrides. I mean, and, 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 uh, as in my campaign, I mean, I said that uh, I'm determined, you know, I'm a determined person, I mean, and you're only determined when when things don't go your way and you have to keep at it. I mean, so, 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 so I know that you had doubts about I mean, the ability for us to, you know, study new growth without getting staff involved with me, but, but, you know, there were a number of people that voted for it, I mean, and I'm, I'm going to uh, work with them and we're going to try and come up with I mean, some ideas I mean, about how to uh, increase new growth in a bold way, you know, that will really make a big difference. I mean, uh, I mean not only the amount of revenue that we can bring in, I mean, but I mean, the amount of housing that we can provide I me mean, for for I me mean, more people, I me mean, more businesses. There, I just think there are things that we can explore, I me mean, that can really do some real positive things for the town, I me mean, and help the budget because that is the way to really mitigate I me mean, or even remove the need to, to uh, uh, the, the overrides. I mean, uh, we just have to determine how it is as a community that we want to grow. Once again, it gives us a chance to have conversations I mean, with, with our fellow residents. I mean, and and, and uh, I enjoy doing it. I think most of us enjoy doing it. And so we just now need, need to, to, to do it. And I think if we tell people, and that was one of the reasons I was really trying to push for I mean, the, the study is to let people know as we go into this override that we're not simply depending on overrides I mean, for uh, in particular, well, well, for, for a long period of time. I mean, uh, 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 that we do, that we are seriously trying to figure out how to do uh, new growth I mean, uh, because cause there's a way that we're doing it now that isn't really accomplishing much. So I'm not sure that we're really trying. I mean, well, let's figure out I mean, what it is that we can do. do. And, and I personally think that should drive 
the master plan, you know, and not be have the master plan make this as a subset of what it's going to explore. I mean, uh, and if I were doing things, I'd probably like say, let's figure out what it is that we need to do to generate I mean, a whole lot more new growth, and then how does that the, the master plan support that? But but it is what it is. Uh, uh, so uh, and, and and I'll just say, I, mean, I understand too that that. Um, I mean, mathematically, we can't keep you know, doing compounded growth. I mean, um, in any system, um, compounding you know, uh, fails. You know, I mean, so so I mean, part of I mean, what we need to talk about as a community is how do we get into equilibrium? I mean, and of course, we exist in, in a larger context, but that's also just part of us being a part of the world, just trying to influence how the, the world works that we start having that conversation too. So, so, um, so that's just my long way of saying I support this. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Dickens. Any further discussion from my colleagues? We have three motions in front of us. Attorney Heim, you recommend three separate votes, correct? Okay. So let's do these uh, in a row. So the first motion by Mrs. Mahan, seconded by my Mr. Diggins, is uh, to hold a special town election on Tuesday, November 7, 2023. Uh, the details she read in her motion. So all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? It is a unanimous four nothing vote. Second motion by Mrs. Ha, Mrs. Mahan, seconded by Mr. Diggins, is a motion to approve a proposition to NAF override local ballot question on said election date in the amount of $7 million, um, with the language also having been read in Mrs. Mahan's motion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? It is a four nothing unanimous vote. The third motion by Mrs. Mahan, seconded by Mr. Diggins, is to adopt the commitments by the select board to the residents of Arlington with an amendment made by um, Mr. Hurd and affirming uh, Mr. Helmuth's prior amendment uh, regarding the organic fields. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? It is also a 4 nothing unanimous vote. Thank you. I think that concludes the regular business for our agenda at the exception of, I have to get to my last page here, um, correspondence received. Oh, future select board. Oh, select, thank you. There it is, future select board meetings. All right. So we have scheduled, um, we have um, uh, our second meeting of June scheduled for the 26th because owing to the Juneteenth uh, town and state holiday on the 19th and then other than that uh, that's it so um, I think that we should I would suggest that we look at a single meeting in July a single meeting in August with uh, as our usual and then you know of course the chair will have to see how much work comes in that, but are there any particular um, thoughts? And I will also consult with Mr. DeCourcy so we can amend this on June 26th. But, um, and of course we don't vote on this. This is just advice to the chair. Um, is there any particular uh, out at days that are not good for the board um, in either of those months? I'd say the 17th, just because it's right in the middle. Is That's a good day? Well, I think. Yeah. A few weeks in between that and the 26th, and yeah. since we can just do once in August, then mm -hmm. I'm thinking of in August we might want to have the um, the goals meeting. I mean, normally I think we do that in July, but given I mean, that I mean, our new manager doesn't start until August, right? You know, but I know August is also a big vacation month for people, so yes. so that may not work, you know. But I just put that out there as something to consider. Would um. And it, can someone remind me, do we do the goals meeting, goals meeting as a standalone separate meeting or in combination with other business? So it's a meeting. Yeah. Um, and I did check with Mr. Feeney's schedule. And, um, you know, he does not have any um, major blocks of time, you know, planned. I think he's planning to, to, to dive in. I think we should give him the benefit of some time in office, however, before we ask him to have goals. Um, so, um, because he starts uh, right at the first of the month. What about if we did... July 17th and August 14th, just to pick dates that are right in the middle of each sure. month. Okay. That's good. Mr. And uh, Mrs. Attorney Heim. I know I'm not official to this. I will not be here August 15th. So. Uh, okay. Well, well that's the deputy uh, council coming in, but, but to see you. Yeah. All right. Um, 
maybe the seventh, because I think you, oftentimes your presence is relevant. <laughs> I'm just saying, yeah. uh, please don't plan around me. I just okay. want to make sure. That you yeah, all right. Well, all right. I'll check with Mr. DeCourcy as well since he's yeah. uh, not able to be with us tonight. And, and I would say it. for August, just for the select board, yeah. um, say 14 or 21. I think the 7 is too close okay. to the pre, you know, yeah. for okay. common VIX and things like that. And all then right. did you, with those two dates set, and I, I agree, I, it had it, it's much more beneficial. Maybe it'll be a shorter meeting, but mm -hmm. as a standalone meeting, yeah. mm -hmm. as well as I'll leave it to the chair. But um, I've done both where one time we, I think it was during COVID and office space was limited. We were mm -hmm. trying to shut things down. But um, I think meeting in the conference room uh, of the town manager's office mm -hmm. is really more conducive um, hmm. yeah. versus mm -hmm. This is sort of like battle, yeah. not battle line strong. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But do you want to set that meeting now, or do you want to wait until Mr. Feeney and I think uh, maybe I'll check with since we have to wait on Mr. DeCourcy's schedule anyway and find out what his vacation schedule would yeah. be, and then um, I'll have a further conversation with Mr. Feeney just to make sure that that makes sense. But we can we can look certainly look for August. He was very open yeah. to that. And so. in the past, which doesn't mean we have to do this, it's traditional. It's been held on it, two different days, two different ways. Yeah. I. Uh, a couple of times it was on a Thursday mm -hmm. from like 6.30, 8.30. One time it was 7 to 9. Mm -hmm. But where um, it may be a little more truncated with, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. it would be more of a focus on the slot. Or it could be on other times we've had it on a Saturday. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Sounds like Thursday's popular. <laughs> right. <laughs> or if, if, it, if, it's, if it's a different, not Sunday. If it's a different other, if it's another day, it doesn't yeah. necessarily have yeah, to be Yeah, because we Thursday. raised originally just us and the manager and any public who wanted yeah, to attend. Yeah, so whatever the chair okay. and, and the manager right. thinks. Um, but, yeah, the weekends, especially in the summer. But um, yeah, Okay, well, that's, that's helpful. It's, yeah. it's general guidance. Uh, let's plan on July 17th, and let's put August 20 in, 21 in for now, okay. pending uh, my consultation with, with our uh, colleague not present tonight. Mm -hmm. And I'll reconnect with Mr. Feeney on just um, – on a good time for when he thinks he'll he'll be ready for goals because he'll have a lot of things to do starting. Can we set at least one meeting in September? Sure. Just for planning purposes. We should. Yeah. Is that all right? Yep. Is that enough? So, Just one. Yeah. Want to do? Um, that would be nine eleven. That would be nine. Yeah, September eleventh, eleventh, and maybe twenty fifth. Since those are just two oh, two weeks. Oh, that'd be great. Okay. Yeah. All right. Oh, good. Yeah, may as well. Yeah. Although I think you're clear of the Jewish holidays then, because I think. I know that 20 oh, days is Yom Kippur. Huh. I checked the calendar. Yeah, Ms. Mar will, right. will check them out. But, right. Yeah, and if there's any conflict, you can let us know next yeah, time. Yeah, it's the 25th. Uh-huh. It's a Yom Kippur in my... Oh. So, okay, maybe not so much. It's let's, Yom Kippur. All right, let's, 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 go, let's go with the 11th for now, and then we'll, we'll figure out what yeah. the, uh, how, the holiday schedule right. looks like. Yeah, good. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and, of course, we'll just have had Town Day on the 23rd, so... Yeah. Yeah. And another celebration. Sure I was going to say, I knew the town day was clear because we checked that. Yeah, I'm well. not sure if, uh, we're, if we were like between the yeah. holidays. Yeah, exactly. Or if we were town outside. day slash town meeting manager. Mars birthday. Yeah. No. No, it's mine. Birthday. Yours. It's yours birthday. Oh, okay. My birthday's in April. Yeah. Huh. I'll just, for the first time, be able to tell that I had a birthday in the whole town celebration. I have a wedding so. coming. Right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you have a wedding. Yeah. That's right. Okay. Yours? I think that's, that's helpful. All right, let's move to correspondence received. We have a request for stop sign on Regis Road from Aaron Charlwood. Uh, request to address clearance issues called by caused by reduction of street width from uh, Mr. Robert Dosha and update on Mass Avenue corridor, uh, Mass Avenue Appleton corridor project and Chestnut Street safety project from Claire Baker, Director of Planning and Community Development. Any motions? Okay, so I'll, I'll, I'll motion to accept the, lot, the letters made and sent the Request for stop signs and the um, clearance caused by drug district went to um, to TAC. Send, send the first two to TAC, you know, and I'll have a conversation with the TAC, the TAC chair about them, you know. And the third one, of course, we'll uh, receive it, you know. I, uh, there was just something about the content that kind of bothered me because I think it framed it such that it made it seem like the that safety wasn't the priority. We said that the prioritization of the 
uh, preserving the parking spaces was the, a big factor in it. You know, it made me seem like it was the factor in it. And, and I know that wasn't the sentiment being of all of us here. I mean, we had differences about how we, how much parking, or whether we wanted parking, you know, on, on the south side, you know, of Mass Ave in that intersection. But it was never an issue of safety. I mean, everyone felt that safety was number one. You know, and so I just kind of wanted to at least clarify that verbally, that I didn't think that he, there was not a lack of concern about safety, just more that folks wanted to you know, get as much parking there as possible. Uh, so that's all. Well, Mr. Diggins, would you, um, what suggestion I may have on the, on the referral motion, uh, so I have a motion to receive and then referral to TAC on the, on the stop sign. Um, I've been in contact with the, with the town manager. The, the resident who sent us that felt that there was some urgency um, and to my judgment, uh, perhaps more that, that, that the usual TAC schedule of consideration might, might consider. So would you consider uh, a joint referral to the town manager for any uh, just evaluation with, with the police um, in DPW for any um, short-term action in addition to referral to TAC for a longer-term view? Sure, sure. I'm, I'm, I'm fine with that, Lee. But, but uh, as you know, we often get on uh, transportation and uh, issues a level of urgency because we we had that with Gray Street, right? You know, we, we got like a bunch of letters from people going like, hey, "This is people yeah. whizzing down the street." You know, so so I'm fine with that. You know, uh, but just keep in mind that when people generally have a concern about traffic, it's urgent for them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sure. So I think we have a, a, a friendly amendment that uh, sure. accepted the, to that. And I think, you know, my intent for that is just if, if appropriate. And if it's not particularly urgent, then I think the normal referral would, would certainly make sense. Um, any further comments from my colleagues? I, I'll second um, Mr. Diggins' motion to receive and refer. And obviously, since you were here and you heard Mr. Radosha, if um, you could just contact him and, you know, uh, make sure or have the office contact him when um, Winter Street will be on the TAC agenda so he can avail himself of the opportunity to come in and reiterate his um, offer to, if appropriate, work with TAC, you know, when they go out on the site visit. Because I know other people in neighborhoods have sometimes found out when TAC's coming out for a site visit and sometimes go out and say, see this is what we're over here and over that and nine times out of ten somebody from TAC comes up with a completely different solution and the person's like oh that's even better than I thought what you know so um, if we could somehow keep Mr. Radosha in the loop on that and then um, <clears throat> on the uh, update from our planning director which I, I definitely appreciate and, and then your comments about Appleton Street and now that the election's over um, having uh, somebody, I'm not supposed to say lie, so I'm supposed to say uh, misinterpret uh, my position on uh, the uh, project for uh, Mass Ave and Appleton Corridor project. Um, the update that we've received and where it's at now is basically to fulfill the state's guidelines. It's my understanding from talking to the planning director. Um, the state has uh, regulations stipulating everything you have to look at, including the area. And um, they received a um, concern and notification from the MIRAC development, which falls into the project, goes from foot of the rocks um, down to mass and forest. Um, so that should have been, in terms of traffic counts, in terms of if you need an additional traffic signal, or maybe you don't need an additional one, but you need an alteration in terms of timing, um, and that's a big piece. So that's what stopped the project. Um, it wasn't any member of the board. It was, we have to fulfill the state's guidelines, and, um, uh, and that's what kind of put us back into a year thing. So that's it. Thank you. Good. I don't want to keep talking about this because I was just going to let the letter pass by. But, I mean, that, if you look back at the meeting, the parking was an issue, but the whole point of what we said was all the safety concerns can be addressed in, in keeping the parking there. So 
the, the, the safety has always been the number one issue that we've dealt with, and to say otherwise is a lie. So we, our concern was, is you know, we had competing interests there, is that we had the two lights and we had the bike lanes that we could put, we could do everything with the parking there. So, and that is what was said at that meeting, and to say otherwise is wrong, and someone can just rewatch the meeting to see that. <laughs> so. Good. So, yeah, I do want to add, yeah, I talked with uh, the town manager too about uh, the design review committee, you know, uh, and, and so, because in the letter it said that uh, things that come out of, well, that as we work through, you know, Re-examining that intersection, that plans would be brought to TAC, and I talked to the town manager and said that we do have that design review committee for that Appleton intersection. You know, it was a committee that was created by the select board, you know, and it has the TAC, a TAC representative, business representative. You know, uh, it's a pretty impressive committee. It took the town manager at the time a while to pull together, you know, and so it hasn't been officially disbanded. So I suggested that it be good to keep them. Uh, and, and the loop, you know, and maybe uh, run things uh, by them as well as by TAC. Uh, I don't know, sir. Uh, Mr. Hurt. I don't know if this is a forum, and you can put, pull me back, Attorney Hyman, if, if we're going beyond board announcements. We're not there yet. Yeah. But <laughs> we, we haven't made it to board announcements. Oh, yeah. Mr. So I guess we're still, we are still a little within scope. Um, yeah, I mean, my thought think, is that they that committee was put together for the initial thoughts and we we got step one. At this point, this is a, especially the way that played out, where we were hit out of left field with this plan that we, we didn't even know was coming on. And that one, today was a little irritating. That one was just like mind blowing that that was put on an agenda. And I mean, I think the conversation should be between whoever the architect that we have and this board. And not, I mean, we can get TAC involved too, but we are the decision makers. And this isn't something that needs to be studied at length. It's, we have to come up with a design that this board's gonna approve. And so I, with all due respect, I, I don't think it should go to, I think the committee, the recommendations from the Appleton Design committee initially were great. I'm a little bit suspicious of how the committee's weighted. I don't know the membership, given some of the recommendations that we've gotten. So my suggestion going forward with Appleton is a is a discussion between whoever the consultant we hire is in this board, and that eliminates the situation where we get. I mean, that was there was public forums to look at a plan that we had never seen before. It's just ludicrous. And so and then after all that, after all that staff time is spent, it comes to us, even though town staff should have known that this board would not support that plan. That's another story. But again, I think this the conversation is with us and whoever a consultant is that we hire. Thank you, and I uh, do want to remind the board that we have a motion before us to simply receive the, uh, the memo. I'm not saying the discussion out of scope. I think it is on, on topic, but I do want to uh, help remind us what we are actually doing with this memo tonight. Um, Mr. Bull, do you have anything? I, I would just, if I could, just briefly, after I talked to Mr. Diggins earlier today about the Design Review Committee, I did check in with the Planning Director. It is my understanding that that committee uh, has not met for a long time and is not still active. Uh, I just wanted to report that to the committee members for your uh, understanding of the situation. Good. Thank you. So a motion by Mr. Diggins to receive all the items and uh, to refer the stop sign request to the town manager um, as appropriate and to the TAC for full consideration. Uh, did anyone second those motions? It's been a while. Second. Ms. Lahan did. Ms. Lahan did. Okay. Thank you. Um, so, um, second by Mr. Ha uh, Mrs. Mahan. All in favor I say. I think I'll miss this sometimes in the past. <laughs> Go ahead. All in favor say aye, please. All right. Aye. aye. Opposed? It is four, nothing, unanimous. On correspondence received. Now we go to the item formerly known as new business and is now currently called board and staff announcements. Ms. Mar. No. 
<laughs> Thank you. Attorney Hyam. No announcements. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Pooler. Um, I just want to say one other thing about the police settlement, in which I think the board members know. Uh, it was 31 to 5 vote. It included um, various financial uh, changes for the police contract, but also that um, in that was that they will agree to start wearing uh, cameras. And as soon as we can deploy them and we're in conversations with them about policy about that, uh, we'll try to move forward with that. Mrs. Mahan. Thank you. <clears throat> Three, as briefly as I can. I, I just want to say again, I did call the town manager, Mr. Pooler, and I meant this with all sincerity, that I was not expecting um, the police contract uh, to be resolved. I was unfortunately having nightmares about long weeks of arbitration. Um, so I want to say thank you to Mr. Pooler as well as, you know, the, the rest of the team. I know the attorneys were involved, um, not meaning Attorney Heim, but attorneys for the town, as well as uh, the Patrolman's Association and um, Karen Malloy and the Deputy Town Manager, um, Mr. McGee. Um, and, uh, I'm, you know, I'm, sometimes I can be highly critical, but yeah, you, you pulled that off, and um, that's as a good town manager can do, uh, and uh, I, I can't thank you enough for doing that. Because I think that with all the contracts sort of now, all things being equal, and, and the, the vote we need at the special town meeting to um, accept and approve the last contract with our town unions, I think it sets up us going forward, kind of starting on, it, on an even field. Um, and then in that same conversation um, I had with Mr. Pooler, I was pushing it. I felt good. I thought it might go there. Um, I did bring up the uh, COVID reimbursement for our retirees, the last little sad group that's out there that certainly I think should have gotten it in its about $83,000. I've heard as high as 103. <clears throat> Mr. Pooler indicated to me, and I, I don't mean to speak to himself, but um, admittedly so, the, the town manager and his staff have been focused on contract negotiations with the Patrolman Association, and that really took a sort of yeoman's a large amount of, um, besides doing the day-to-day, day-to-day responsibilities that need to keep the town running. But having said that, I said, you know, um, can the negotiations that are now settled, can the issue regarding the COVID, possible COVID reimbursement for retirees um, maybe take that place? And um, he indicated, you know, it's something he's been discussing and we'll continue and, and, and we'll speak to town staff around that. And, um, and I said, well, if you want, I can find the money for you. Um, and he said, where would you find it? And I said, I'll tell you Monday night. Um, so, two places I would point to, because um, we're talking $83,000 for retirees. Um, and I raised this earlier, and I know Ms. Cody will have a conversation with you. Once again, our earnings on investment um, were at like 984% over than what we projected. And I did, I just want to let you know, I did raise to Ms. Cody if she could since this is the third time we've gotten this report, and I cited that in the past, financial people told me, when you're out of whack on a positive or negative end consistently, that that's not a good thing. You may think, oh boy, that windfall's great. Is our $200,000 estimate too low? So I said that. But that, so that's one place I would point to the $83,000, because it's a one-time expense. I also brought up that um, I asked about the opera update, because I know that the town manager, the comptroller, and Powers and Sullivan are in charge of receiving, ad administrating, administering, as well as the report to the federal government, the U.S. Treasury Department. And I'd like to see a report on that. And she indicated that that is something the town manager, and we should see um, soon. So the second place that I would point to, and this ties into what I'm anticipating that we're going to get, I went back in my notes um, when we received the COVID, the opera funding, um, and the town manager, Mr. Chapter Lane, presented to us um, an initial 
framework and got public comment, including from this board. Um, and thank you, Mr. Diggins, for texting me a little after five this morning. We got to, I missed those texts and talking so early, but um, I wanted to make sure my memory was correct. Um, what happened in the end was there are 17 uh, categories, and this is from the October 25th, 2021 meeting. 17 categories that ultimately the town manager presented um, to the board. And what he did was on certain things like behavioral health support, you see $300,000 in bold, but then underneath you see two 150,000 allocations. And um, I spoke to Mr. Dinkins because I know one of the things that he um, put in a request for that the board support, supported was a request for a million dollars for premium pay for private sector essential workers. And he was um, targeting uh, lower income Arlington residents that during COVID, you know, people were saying, thank goodness, you know, the grocery store workers are there, or, you know, the custodians cleaning the facility, medical facilities and Arlington residents. And he requested a uh, million dollars to go to that. And Mr. Chapdelaine allocated $500,000 for that. Um, that money is still there. It's never, that program was never created. Um, and we were talking about that this morning, you know, maybe what happened in the city of Cambridge, we can look for a framework. But, um, so that's the other place I would point to was uh, Mr. Chapdelaine had, uh, of the 17 items that he listed, one of them was $500,000 for premium pay, pay for private sector essential workers. And again, that's the October 25th, 2021 meeting. So those are the two places that, you know, kind of bantering with the town manager when he said, well, I need time to find the money if, if it's there. And he didn't say it was there. And I said, well, I'll find it for you. So there's the two places. But I also anticipate that, um, because, this is what, um, it was ultimately, as we know, the town manager, Mr. Chapdelaine's recommendation, um, he, he got us to endorse it, but um, just like we said we wanted a million and he powered it down to 500,000, I do anticipate that the uh, report that we'll get regarding the opera funding, that that's where the money should have been going. So I, I, that's kind of, that's what I want to see in terms of, um, the report that we get back on that. And then the last thing was, and I discussed this um, with Mr. Pooler, and I, I don't expect an answer tonight, but um, got an awful lot of emails again on Trash uh, uh, Republic, I think is our trash company. Um, we seem to have fallen into a pattern. Whenever there's a holiday, it throws uh, trash collect collection off. And each time there seems to be more and more slippage in terms of what that delay means. And I noticed on one of the lists that I'm on that um, people on something like that, that's not something the select board has any purview over, it's trash collection. So, you know, give out information of the process of, you can contact the recycling coordinator, but here's the number for Republic. And then people had posted, and it's townwide. Initially, it was just one area up on, I forget what they call it, Little Scotland, which is Kilsyth, and but it's also East Arlington, Orvis Road. So the real concern that I had have, and I spoke to the manager, and I know he's going to look into this, is um, that, and I didn't believe this was actually the case, but uh, our recycling coordinator confirmed it, that um, residents are being told that if you're, and I'm not talking recycling, I'm not talking yard trimmings, I'm talking trash, that you gotta hang on to it for a week. It's not gonna be picked up. And the recycling director sent an email to the list saying that um, an angry, that she had composed an angry email and sent it to the uh, Department of Public Works, I'm just going by my memory, um, as well as um, to the board. Um, so I, I've asked the town manager to look into that. Um, for someone's trash to hang, in, hang around for a week, if it's a one-off, 
okay, we can do that. But it doesn't seem to be, this is the second time that I've heard that this has happened, that people had to hang, and that, you know, I don't know what relief we can get out of the contract. It may be nothing, but if this is going to be a consistent thing, especially with an override coming up and people can't get their trash picked up, then we're going to have to try to figure out some fix to it. As well as, I, I definitely would be interested in, in this, I know the rest of the board would be interested in seeing exactly what that email is from the recycling coordinator, if there's anything that we should be doing on our end, which I don't think there is, but um, because the email that I saw on one of the lists that I saw didn't contain what the angry email was. So I, I definitely want to see that. So, and that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Mahan. Mr. Hurd. <laughs> we're in, um, uh, we're in. I talked you out of your <laughs> board announcement. No, I, he got bored um, with my board announcement. Go ahead, sorry. Two things. So, one, I admit this is part of my board announcement before, but we did have the Hurtfield rededication. Again, I want to thank town staff, including the town manager who attended, um, members of the Recreation Commission were in attendance, um, Conservation Commission. It was very well, a very well attended event, and I actually hadn't been down there. I, I, I don't know, maybe in my mind, I wanted to, like Christmas morning, I wanted to open up my presents and be surprised. But the end result of Herd Field is just unbelievable. The benches there, the the new memorial, the the walking path. Um, there's a new batting cage there, so it really is an amazing looking field, and they. It, Boy, the, all the boys on my team and on the Giants had a really great experience getting to participate in the rededication. So it was a really well, well uh, put on event by the Recreation Department. And I want to thank Joe Conley, who actually wasn't able to attend because he had a wedding. But uh, Sean Garbley there, was there. Um, Steve was there. So I, I think that was it. <laughs> but um, yeah, that was, a, that was a fun event. We unfortunately lost <laughs> on a controversial home plate call, but, <laughs> you know, it's youth sports, I guess. Um, and then the other thing, uh, last week I attended a joint committee meeting for the Arlington 2020, so the 2025 celebrations of Concord, Lexington, um, Bedford, Carlisle, um, Lincoln. Um, so it was good to get to participate with other, other towns in the region to see what they were doing and kind of bounce some ideas off each other. And it's clear that a few of the other towns are a little ahead of us. So I think with me and uh, Jim Feeney was there and a couple of the members of our committee, it is going to catapult us to get going and get some more planning done. Um, but it was a, a really well well-run event by the town of Bedford. That was at the Bedford Public Library. So, more to come on that. Got it. <laughs> Mr. Diggins. Well, so how did the first pitches go? They I went. Mean, I'm supposed to deliberate on, on our board <laughs> and staff announcements, so, you know. Well, Wesley and Dylan's was good. My nephew, Gabe, who's four, threw it about five feet, and my nephew, Peter, just ran it in. So. <laughs> We'll overlook the. Uh, yeah, I, was, I, was, I, was, I, I was in Annapolis, so I would have been there. You know, uh, not, nothing, nothing for me. And I also have no announcements. Move to adjourn. Second. And a motion to adjourn by Mrs. Mahan, seconded by Mr. Diggins. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? It is really unanimous.